Why, hello there, everyone. Now, I know I haven't taught a class here in the Chipkin University in a while. That's because I had to some allegations. Why the fuck do we have the Dean? Uh, from like two months ago. Um, yeah, they weren't too good. They're all good now. I had no relations with that girl. Um, so I'm allowed to teach her again. Hey, Christian. Okay. Uh, can you say like, what the cat doing this time? Yeah, spice it up a little bit, Christian. Because it's going to kind of fucking old. Everyone in the comments, if you made it this far in the video, say what the cat doing. It'd be really funny. Hey, yo, what the cat doing? What yeah, the that'd, be what really cool. that'd be really funny, I think. Okay. It'd be really big. Holy shit. I'm so today cool. I'm going to teach about the Dragon Age lore. Uh, Dragon Age is a video game that you might have heard of. And Sorry. it's made by Bioware when Bioware was good, and they are not good anymore. Okay, question. What was yes. Bioware's most recent hit? Anthem. Unless you count uh, no, Mass e not. unless you count Mass Effect Legendary Edition, their most recent game was Anthem. No, it was not. Yeah, no. and the one before that was uh, Andromeda. Well, the one before that was Mass Effect Andromeda. And Anthem has such a good opportunity. You want to know the one before uh, Mass Effect Andromeda? It was Dragon Age Inquisition. They came out in 2014. They have in the past like five years, I want to say Bioware's made three new games. Not even that. Anthem. Could they have only made one original like franchise in the past five years, and only two full games. Oh, Anthem had some why opportunity. Why they, why and they they break the, money machine? It was a cool system. Everything, I like the flight everything system. Everything has opportunity. Bioware felt it so clean, made. like a money machine. Yeah. They, and then yeah, they got bought by EA. What, you guys but we're yeah. not getting into Bioware. This isn't a Bioware lecture. Mm. We're talking about Dragon Age. Well, kind of so like Dragon Age is the little bastard stepson of Mass Effect. Yo. Um, and it has three games in it so far, and the fourth one's coming out. But I'm too fucking tired of waiting for the fourth game. So I decided we're just gonna play the Dragon Age RPG as a sequel we're to the We're gonna do it, to say. but better. Yeah, <laughs> so much better. <laughs> um, and this is the recap on all the lore, so you guys are caught up through Dragon Age Eclipse. It's gonna be good because I'm called. in it. It's gonna be good because he's in it. It's gonna be good because he is in it. Look and then, at, look at like that a lovely starring face. Starring John Ross. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> yes. Dragon Age. Uh, Dragon Age is actually only the name of one specific century. I'm guessing it's the, the one that says the Dragon. Dragon Age. What might say? <laughs> yes. Wow. I'm so, I'm so funny. The Age of Dragon. Can you have um, a drink? It's so like Thetis. Thetis is the so setting. Thetis. Yeah. It's like a big continent. So Thetis is the continent. The I, country. Or not, I think so. Those are two different things. Thetis. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thetis is used interchangeably with world and continent. Is it the known world? Yes, it's pretty much the known so world. So the continent Thetis is also the known world it, yes, to there the are, people that are on Thetis. Like, there, there's like yeah, jungle yeah, islands, yeah. there's like Saharan and Parvalan that are so, north of Thetis. It's like, it's like Pangea or something. Like kind of like that. Uh, we know that Thetis is in the southern hemisphere rather than the northern hemisphere because Ferelden, which is like the southernmost country, it's described as really cold down there. Ferelden is based off England. Um, and then as you go up, as you get to like uh, sort of where uh, Tevinter is, it's like more temperate climate. And when you get up to Parvalin, which is like way north of uh, Thetis, it's like a jungle continent. Mm -hmm. So we're pretty sure that Dragon Age takes place in the southern hemisphere. Of Brave of you to assume they followed the natural laws. It is, because <laughs> as we'll learn later, Thetis has two moons, and one of them is really fucking big. And yeah. so I don't know how... Skyrim can do it, so can they. Skyrim... They have not, two moons. There's no... There's one moon. No, there's two moons name, in Skyrim. Its name is, um... You're an idiot. Fucking, you know what? I'll do the Elder Scrolls lecture next time. And I'll <laughs> Dude, right. I dare you to go and look at the Skyrim Skyblock, uh, Skybox right now. Right. Dude, don't go look at the Skyrim Skybox right now. Alright. We need to get this motherfucker moving. So, the <laughs> calendar of Thetis. Um, we're going to be following the Chantry calendar because it's the most widely used. There are two moons in the sky above Skyrim. Get fucked! I am actually <laughs> stupid. <laughs> and I was, I was such an Elder Scrolls war nerd for like fucking years. Yeah, so. guess what, buddy? Holy I shit. know about the king of worms. <laughs> Fuck, everyone knows about yeah, dude, he, uh, he's the I king don't. of worms. <laughs> I'm, I don't know how the king of worms is. The okay. Marco, that the one fucking one epic only villain who you just kill in a side quest in oblivion. <laughs> okay, fucking, we're not talking about that. I only play Skyrim. Right, calendar. So, months of the year, these don't really line up to our Gregorian months because Southern Hemisphere, so it's all inverted. Mm -hmm. And it gets confusing because there is a month called August in the Andrastian calendar. Augustus. <laughs> However, their August would take place, theoretically, around the time of our February. 
the fuck? So yeah, when you say August oh, in reference to Thetis, whenever we play, it's you're so really referring to February. I'm so fucking so dead. When, um, yeah, when are we starting? What anyway, month? here's the month. Wait, can we start in August? <laughs> what? Can we start in August? I prefer April. April. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, okay. I but might, I might however, change, when we do Eclipse, I might change the name of August to Andras, because originally Andraste's name was going to be Augusta. Andraste. And that was going to be named Please August. have me. Me gusta. I'm gonna go sit anyway, and, yeah, and Ross is like the uh, Jesus Christ figure of the, the Dude, episode. she got beheaded and everyone so, was like based. Um, <laughs> so this is the January. I'm just gonna say January to winter. So this like oh, no, the so, character so so this is spelled slightly differently from the character. That's annoying. It's I S instead of A S. Oh and so, there's, like, there's yeah, a like high and, like, 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 oh, there's a there's a high <laughs> name and a low name for every month. I'm just gonna be using their uh, low high key names. versus low key. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna be using their low common. Names. What's what's the high key name for August? August. Matronalis. Never mind. Oh, Keep it on the low key. <laughs> 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 okay, so we've got Solus, August, Kingsway, Harvest Mirror, First Fall, Herring, Winter March, Guardian, Draconis, Cloud Cloud Reach, Blooming Tide, and Justinian. I should have brought my fire. You should have brought my notebook. Fuck you. It's okay. We'll we'll cover this shit again. I'm I'm not going to be using months like at all. I think. Good. Um, anyway, you never did. The main thing. That's good. The main thing you need to learn about the Andrastian calendar is that they have a weird way of writing down dates, and that is where you've got one number, like let's say up here with the Tower's Age, you've got three, and then you've got the colon and ten. What that means is it is the tenth year of the third age. So when you're writing down the date, actually kind of makes sense. Let's see, when you're writing down the date for three, uh, the tenth year of the Towers Age, you would write it down in its proper form as three ten towers. That is that is like the proper form. And it's only like twenty twenty one. So each age scales from uh, zero to ninety nine. Um, with the zero of year being a thing. Yeah. Um, and there are nine ages so far if you don't count the ancient period. Uh, the ancient period is everything that came before the Chantry. I count the ancient period. So, BC. starting right into the ancient period BC. here, let's just jump, let's just get right before, into it. Oh, <laughs> you beautiful right bastards. In. Yeah, before we have a fucking Sea of Thieves out along. Yeah, negative 7,600 ancient. <laughs> Arlathan is founded. Ah! Fucking Arlathan is the elven empire that existed thousands oh, of years ago. Oh, that good old place. Yes. This, that, your and place that for fucking, for fucking centuries, the elves just lived. For centuries? Just lived. And they couldn't, they were immortal. Yeah. So they couldn't age, actually. All right. Um, and they just sort of fucking existed. The elves, they worshipped these, um, these nine, <laughs> eight, nine-ish gods called the uh, Evanuris. Um, and they're pretty cool. Like, Arlathan elves are basically your typical Tolkien elves. It's not until we get around here that the elves start being more interesting. Mm. So, negative 4,600, 3,000 years in the future after Arlathan, elves make the first contact with dwarves. At the time, dwarves are basically like kind of drones, Rats. as far as we know. They were created by these things called titans, which are giant underground things. That have lyrium as their blood. Lyrium's like the mana source, and it's a rock. It's a blue rock. Mm -hmm. And Titans sort of created the dwarves. And Titans are also it's it's unsure what exactly a fucking Titan is, but we know they kind of live under the earth, and they can shape stone. So they probably caused the continents to be the way they are right now. Titans are kind of weird. Um, as far as we know right now, the elves killed all the titans to free the dwarves. Bruh. We learn so later are, on, so at like, the tail end over here, that there is at least one more titan alive. So are elves and dwarves homies? Yes, they are homies. Oh, so big homies. Okay. 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 Uh, negative 3,100. Humans show up, and it is specifically said that humans come to Thetis. We don't know where they come from, but they do come to Thetis. They come from Earth. Yeah, it's 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 specifically stated um, that they come to Thetis rather than just having existed there. So, um, I think we're getting into the first date that I don't have written up there. Yep, we. I, it's going to be a lot of this in my notes now. So, negative two thousand eight hundred and fifty ancient. The elves who were once immortal start aging. A lot of elves think this is because they met humans and the humans somehow polluted them. Um, <laughs> Humans. We figure Fucking out later human. that something Dirty touch. We gave you cuties. Uh, 50 years after <laughs> that, touch? 
You guys are, after are, that, these beings called the Old Gods make contact with the Neromanians, which are a human tribe. The Old Gods take the form of dragons. There are seven of them, and there's like, they each have different roles, like Dumat is the, uh, the dragon of secrets. Um, the most recent one, Orthemiel, was the dragon of beauty. Like, like, um, dragons like in Dragon Age? Yes. Like in Origins? Skyway? And w one thing... One thing we should note, um, the dragons, or the old gods, take the form of dragons, but they are probably not dragons. Because They're wyverns. <laughs> <laughs> because in, okay, so in um, Dragon Age, uh, the only dragons that grow wings, the only dragons that grow wings are female dragons. Ooh. So, male dragons don't even get wings. <laughs> but they're wyverns. Because they're wyverns. <laughs> wyverns have fucking wings. <laughs> no. <laughs> have you ever played Terraria? Si but here's yeah, the thing. So. Six out of seven, six out of seven of the old gods are male. So, they probably aren't actually dragons. Because if they were, then none of them would have fucking wings, except for one. Um, and her name is Ratsukel, mm. and she is one of the two... Maybe they're just based, though. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they're just built different. Anyway, the old yeah, gods are teaching. They, uh, they contact the Neromanians uh, through dreams from the Golden City. The Golden City is somewhere in the Fade. The Fade is like the heaven, basically. The dreamscape. The dreamscape. You go there when you're dreaming. Uh, it's If you get you get magic from the Fade, so dream. dwarves can't actually become wizards. Do they dream? Because they've been polluted too much by lyrium, and they can't dream. <laughs> dwarves, they can't dream. They don't have any connection to the Fade. That's why they can't be oh. mages. Uh, we don't know the specifics behind it, but we know it has something to do with them being around lyrium for so long. So, the dwarf mage. Uh, negative 1,815... Oh, wait, shit. What do you think Skyward was like? Yeah, what if you really wanted that dream? What are you talking about? Okay, okay, right, okay, so the Neromanian dreamers, which are like shamans of their tribe, basically mages, they bring the old gods through the veil, and um, this is this is known as the original sin. So the dreamers, the dreamers bring the old gods into the mortal world, this is known as the original sin, and in the Chantry, it was a bad fucking play. <laughs> That's how the Chantry tells it. <laughs> fucking Chantry. Um, eventually the old gods are banished. Well, it wasn't the Chantry that did it, did it? Okay, Negative 1,815. The human tribe called the Alamari, living in what will one day be known as Tereldin, you guys are split Americans, into two Native Americans. Uh, so the Alamari split into uh, the Alamari and the Avar. Um, Negative 1,700 ancient. Another group called the Chasen break off from the Alamari Chasen. and settle in the Kokari Wilds. Yeah, those guys so are right great. now in Felden, you've got three human tribes called the Alamari, the Avar, and the Chasen. And in Tevinter, which is sort of like northwest of Ferelden, you've got the Neromanians, and they're all about the old gods. So, Miss Monsu. <laughs> she was Miss one of the old gods. So the old gods are the dragon people. The dragon, dragon. Yes. Yes. Dragon yes. Age um, eventually, the Neromanians will form a fuck ton of different kingdoms. Troll. Um, these kingdoms are known as Tevinter, Neromania, Barandur, and Corinus. Oh. Eventually, Tevinter and Neromania uh, merge into just Tevinter. Okay. So Why basically, Tevinter exactly. swallows Neromania. Why did they do that? Um, was the, it just like it was like, it was like an agreement? Kind of like overtake yeah, it was like an agreement. Like, um, okay. The Tevinter like the Tevinter right. Imperium itself is heavily inspired by the Roman Empire, so a lot of their lore is going to like sort of conflate and make sense. I like to think about that the reason why the old land got swallowed by the other land was the same reason why Texas got swallowed by America. Yeah. Because they're hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Americans are hungry. Okay. So, I mean, um, also, so Tevinter, which is now <laughs> near Romania and Tevinter, become Tevinter. And then eventually they also swallow up Corvus. Um, as for Baron Dur, Baron Dur gets Pompeyed. <laughs> gets fucking. Like this god? Yeah. Like wiped off the face of the earth. Um, this character called Solus actually talks about it later because <laughs> he walks Solace. the fade. He's pretty Solace. cool. Um, <laughs> Solus, like the monk. <laughs> So, I want that to uh, be my and birthday. negative 981 ancient, um, elves, uh, yeah, Arlathan elves start warring with Tevinter. Because they're like, these fucking humans are getting too big now. They've got three kingdoms. That's and just one to too stop many. This shit from happening. Biggest human Tevinter wins the war. <laughs> no. Tevinter wins the war. 
America, let's fucking go. Woo! We killed those elves. They just erase elven history, basically. Okay Arlequin gets that. swallowed. So, kind of like Native American. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the way I've yeah. envisioned it's it. Like it's like Americans and Actually, Natives. Well, right now, elves are sort of Africa. the big superpower. So they're it's Egyptians. Sort of, not, like, they become mm. very Native American-like later on, but right now they're Egyptians. So they're, yeah, they're Egyptians. Oh, yes. And then the Roman Empire is like, the Roman Empire what's good? And <laughs> So, uh, supposedly, Elvin Cleopatra died, and finally, Rome, Rome Tevinter was like, all right, let's take this shit. So, <laughs> like real life. So yeah, like real life. Just, so, humans are jar, so humans are just like ruining shit because that's what Yes, so humans, and what is now modern day Orlais, uh, Tevinter takes over the Arlefan Empire, so, completely erases their history. Arlefan, the city, sinks <laughs> under the ground. Just and, like real life. Oh, oh, and <laughs> just Elvin, like real life. How does it just sink? Um, we'll get to that later. Okay. Elves are taken as, as slaves by Tevinter. I like the idea, right, if, that the uh, Imperium had a, a guy named Mark Antony <laughs> as their leader. And they were trying to bang the leader of the elves. But the leader of the elves was like, I'm already kind of married. And Mark Antony's like, okay, all right, now to sack your city and sink it. <laughs> Classic of Mark okay. Antony. So Tevinter got a really big fucking morale boost. Um, and they were like, we're going to start heading east and we're going to enslave the Alamari. Woo! Oh, damn! Um, they rolling. So yeah. Deventer Jeez. tries to enslave the Alamari. Uh, they have trouble, but they do manage to hold the Ferelden land for a while. Negative uh, 695 ancient. West Deventer breaks off and becomes the Anderfels. The <laughs> Anderfels is basically like Germany. It's a bunch of like little kind of... Like country states. Wait, age is it like the Holy Roman, Roman Empire, or is it like pre Holy Roman Empire, or is it like Early German, like Tevinter's Holy Roman Empire? Ah, yeah. I see. It's it's more early Germany. Okay, gotcha. But we know a lot of the Anderfels language that we know uh, is based on German words, and you'll see a lot of the nations in Thetis are based on real life countries. Like Antiva is sort of a weird fucking mix. Of, Which one's America? Um, that would be either the Free Marches or the Dwarves. Because the right. dwarves have American accents. All right, yeah, guys. The free, marches, the free marches are basically like early day colonial America because it's a bunch of city states that band together. Yeah, that is to help each other. That's so, the boys. Yeah, the free marches are more akin to America. Well, but Orzammar itself is America. <laughs> well, Drew, about, I think I might have to change my character. What if I just change my entire entire character idea to be a dwarf now? Be American. American. You go around with a really fucking food cool. truck. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> 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 I feel like it's more definitely. Okay. Tevinter establishes slave cities, uh, slave cities after a long war with the Anderfels. So basically, the Anderfels breaks away, and Tevinter's like, "Fuck you, we're gonna war with you." No. And eventually, they come to like a sort of pseudo peace, uh, or Tevinter kind of annexes the Anderfels again. Anderfels, but it remains the Anderfels. I fucking hate Tevinter. Yeah. They're such assholes. Yeah, Everyone a lot of people them. hate Tevinter. They ruin everything. Yeah, you know what, buddy? Um, Guess who fucks up Tevinter? We can't get there yet. It's not. Um, it's in the. It's in the, uh, it's in the blessed uh, age. Archon Amaldrius, sure. who's like the Archon, is like the leader of Tevinter. He's assassinated by his own apprentice. Oh yeah. No, isn't he it, was assassinated for taking a lowborn mage as his apprentice. Isn't the Tevinter leaders all immortal? Oh, oh okay. The Tevinters are ruled by an Archon, which is like um, a very super magical dude, Ooh. and he's got like a count. He's got the Magisterium below him, which are like Parliament for mages. Um, Tevinter is a mageocracy, so like magic rules there, magic made as makes, it should, as it should. Might makes right. It's kind of like the Telvanni, yeah, in, okay. in okay. fucking Elder Scrolls, yeah. Now, now I understand. <laughs> now you understand. It even kind of sounds similar. It's like it was baked. Oh. I got this at a restaurant in Iowa. <laughs> I will. It's called the T Rex Cafe. You almost broke it. <laughs> I, I got another one, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, but the main slave city that you need to worry about right now is Amarius. <laughs> Amarius is uh, made to like mine rocks and shit. Not and America. the city itself is built into the walls. It's called the White City of Chains. Okay. It was built by slaves. All of the buildings. <laughs> there's no individual buildings. All the buildings are mostly just set into the walls. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the Anderfels were retaken by the Venture. Uh, negative 410 ancient. The Kossuth land in Parvalin. The Kossuth are... Now, the word Kossuth is heavily debated in the Dragon Age community. 
But right now, the, for the purposes of this lecture, the Kasif is the word I'm going to use to refer to the Qunari that's the race, the race of the Qunari. Um, and the Kasif are basically these big gray people with these dragon horns um, and kind of like these pointy ears. And they follow this thing called the Qun, uh, spelled Q-U-N. The Qun is like this religious text, this They're religious doctrine. So they live like almost this like socialistic life. Um, they're communists? They're basically I, they're socialists. socialists. I'm trying to report oh, you right now, guys. Yeah. They're know. basically, oh. everyone, okay, so here's the thing with the Qun. Everyone has their roles, and everyone living by the Qun is super happy with their roles. Like, if you're basically, like, if you're born a farmer, you're like, yeah, I mean, it sucks that I can't do anything but, to farm. But, but I'm a fucking farmer. It's yeah, funny. And the community supports you. Um, I can farm all the shit that like, I want. Yeah, you're stuck to one role your entire life. How the life community should be. supports you. Um, <laughs> I there agree. are kind of gender roles in the Qune. It's a little weird. Okay, so if you're a warrior in the Qune, you have to present as male. That doesn't mean that you need to be male. You can be a female Qunari that lives her life as a male using male pronouns. No, they can become sort of transgender. Shit. It's basically like um, transgenderism or gender fluidity basically, is how I describe it. Because they don't have to necessarily undergo an operation. But it's like it's kind of like a gender fluidity. So you can be a soldier if you're a female, you just have to present as male. Um, it's sort of uh. weird. It's some weird shit with the Qun. And it's kind of a retcon, kind of not a retcon. Men only wow. in the military. <laughs> Unless you have booba, but you have to say you're a man. You yeah. have booba, dude. That's okay. It's that way the women don't get raped in the army. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the cost of land down. Um, negative 395 ancient. A group of Tevinter Magisters called the Magisters Sidereal, and it's spelled like Sidereal and it fucking annoys me, but the Magisters Sidereal, the Magisters Sidereal are the seven high priests of the old gods. You guys good? I just, nice. like, full, full fist, just went. <laughs> anyway. He just grazed it too. The Magisters oh, okay. Sidereal. Okay. They're the high priests of each of the old gods. And um, the old gods start talking to them, these seven people. And they're like, you guys need to fucking go to Amarius and get into the Golden City. Yeah. That's what the old gods just keep saying this to their high priests. Um, the high priest we know the most about is Corypheus. And he comes into play later. He's that guy right there. That guy? Why yeah. does he get really um, mad? He is the high priest of Dumat. The, Dumat. Uh, the dragon of secrets. Okay. Um, yeah, they basically go to Amarius, they punch a hole through the fucking veil. The veil is what separates the Fade and the reality. This is the first time anyone has ever physically walked in the veil without dreaming. So they fucking roll up, they're strapped up, they go to the Golden City. Yo, it's said, good. It is said, when they get to the Golden City, it turns black, and the blight is brought into the world. This is known as the second sin. So... What, what is the was blight? the first sin? The original sin was the Neuromanians bringing the old gods into the material world. Ooh. I talked about that earlier. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, so, so yeah. just a refresher. Magister yeah, Sidereal, they Magister. begin the blights, essentially. So what is a blight? We don't really know that much about blights, but it's these creatures called Darkspawn, and they're like tainted, uh, sort of human-like creatures. And what happens is they live in the Deep Roads, which is the old Dwarven Empires, basically, that live underneath the ground. Uh, at, at this time, by the way, the Deep Roads aren't abandoned, and the Dwarven Empire is prospering. That does not stay that way for long. <laughs> uh -huh. So, because the Blights, they all come from the uh, Abyss, which is the region below the Deep Roads. And why, why do the Blights come from the Abyss? Well, the Darkspawn, they have this thing in their mind called the Calling, and it's basically this urge where they have to go and seek out an old god. As you remember, all the old gods are imprisoned below the earth, deep below the earth in, like, prisons, basically. So they're supposed to just start digging? So yeah, they start doing, well, they come from the deep roads. Uh. So they, they do a fucking dig dug or something. And eventually, <laughs> eventually what happens is the dark spawn find an old god, and they corrupt it, and it becomes an archdemon, which is a blighted version of an old god. So, what happens when they find an archdemon is this archdemon can send dreams to all of the darkspawn in the fucking world, and um, it commands them, it brings them all together. Whereas before darkspawn, 
were kind of driven by this goal to find fucking the old gods. Black but in the meantime, old. they're just fucking around doing dark swamp <laughs> shit. Feeling a little cute, you know? Just, yeah, just, yeah. Stop, yeah. just stop. Just stop. Hey, guys, what we going to do? Yeah, oh, like, no. hey, hey, Bob, you want to go, hey, Bob, you wanna go kill some dwarves tonight? You know, <laughs> you know hey, like, I don't know, like man. That. I gotta find this fucking... This, this anyway. I don't know. The, the, the wife doesn't want me out on that. <laughs> <laughs> the first, the like, first old god... Like that, definitely. Uh, the first old god that is Maybe corrupted... The first old god that is corrupted by the blight is Dumat. The God of Secrets. Um, so, the first, uh, so a blight is basically whenever there's an archdemon commanding the dark spawn to destroy shit all around Thetis. First blight lasts for about 195 years. They're just party rocking. Yes. Um, they're party rocking the fucking house. So Dumont's flying around. He's tearing shit up. Just absolutely wrecking shit. Um, 15 years into the blight, dwarven tigs begin falling left and right to dark spawn because. Dark spawn come from the deep roads. Dwarves live in the deep throes, roads. Dwarven supply lines are getting cut off. All of their fucking people are just dying um, until Orzammar, which is like basically the last standing tag, it seals itself off from the rest of the tags, basically dooming them to the dark spawn. Damn. Yep. And it is the final bastion of Dwarven community. I mean, holy. Kind of and I mean, it is. It I is mean. in sort of northwestern Corellum. In the prospect boundaries. I know where it is. It's like right next to the main circle tower. <laughs> but yeah, that's so Orzammar like is basically the last fucking bastion of dwarven civilization. It's right next to Red Cliff. Yes. Um. So as this is happening, everyone's like, "Well, hold on a second, because the old gods are still the main religion for all the humans, and everyone's going, mm, "Oh wait, wait a second here." So you're telling me that our high priests went down in the fucking fade and they caused all this destruction and shit to happen? Mm, rebellion! Okay. <laughs> so they, they basically just start fucking killing priests of the old gods. Oh, yeah. There are religious rebellions all over the place. Tevinter is going to its fucking knees. The Rome, Rome has fallen. Classic Rome. <laughs> the Byzantinian Empire is about to be formed. Oh, yeah. Dude, my favorite <laughs> empire? The yeah. weakest that ever exists? Yes. Because they Who's the Ottoman Empire? empire? Um, uh, fucking... Orle. Orle. Oh. <laughs> Even though they're France. The strongest empire. Okay. What's the difference? <laughs> so, negative 305 ancient, we're 90 years into the first flight. Um, the Grey Wardens are founded. Grey Wardens are these people that are like, you know, let's fuck around a little bit. Let's do some experimentation. What if we, like, drank darkspawn blood? <laughs> Wouldn't that be cool? Hey, yeah. <laughs> we're 90 years into a natural disaster that's just been wiping out the fucking population of Thetis. Let's drink and they're like, blood. let's... <laughs> Let's right start us. figuring this shit out. Like, yeah, so they, they make this concoction that is dark spawn blood and lyrium, a little piss and vinegar as well. Okay. And they start they chug the shit. A lot of them die when they chug the shit, but some of them survive and they become Grey Wardens. So Grey Wardens, because of the dark spawn blood in them, they have dreams of the archdemon, but they have this sort of awareness to where they can detect dark spawn and they can just fucking kill them easily. Um, it said that one Grey Warden could take out dozens of Darkspawn by themselves. Uh, that's um, not true because my Dragon Age character in Origins gets fucked all the time. You're fucking, you must be playing on Nightmare, dude. <laughs> no, I'm playing on easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, Grey Wardens, <laughs> also, they have Griffins. Um, we don't really know why they have Griffins and why they're the only people with Griffins, but the Grey Wardens tame Griffins. I want a Griffin. Um, I want a Griffin Cavalry. I want a Griffin. Well, I'll replace well, the Griffin Cavalry. Drew, can I have a Griffin? The Griffins kind of fucking go extinct later. I can, well, <laughs> just like the Grey that? Wardens you know, before us, they will make new ones. You know well, how Dodos were? There are new ones. Woo! You know how, you know how Dodos are just gone now? I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna bring one back <laughs> and show you. Like, okay, so <laughs> the fucking Grey Wardens just fly in on the backs of Griffins, start cutting down Darkspawn left and right. They're fucking heroes, basically. Um, they're kind of like the Jedi Order sort of no. analogy. Because I always I always say Dragon Age mm -hmm. Origins is basically fantasy Star Wars. Mm -mm. So the Grey Wardens are basically kind of the Jedi. No, there is no Empire. Okay. Well, there is. The Tevinter Empire. No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they're getting their Apparently. shit right. <laughs> anyway, they're so good at killing Darkspawn that uh, they get to the Anderfels, which is where Dumont's hiding out. And they, they make an alliance with the Anders king, and they're like, well, um, since we're so good at doing this shit, well, they basically bring Dumont to his knees and basically present him to the Anders King. And they're like, here you go. You can fucking kill it. You get the final, final blow. So he kills it. Bad fucking idea. Ah, uh, that's a third sin. <laughs> no, no, no. There's only been two sins oh, okay. in all of, of this. Oh, okay. Um, so 
What happens when an archdemon is killed by someone who isn't a Grey Warden is it just goes into the nearest dark spawn body and reforms. And this is how Dumont escapes. He goes into like some fucking gin lock. He goes into fucking some gin lock somewhere who's skittling about. And he just turns into a big dragon. Imagine, right? Away. Imagine. And people fucking buy him, and we're like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, no, imagine being oh, like yeah. a fucking Grey Warden, and right? it's like, oh, there's a gin lock. I'm gonna go kill him, right? It's just a little gin lock novel and on some bones of his friends, right? <laughs> And then it just becomes a dragon. And you're just like, fuck, he escaped. Okay, uh, I should also explain what gin locks and her locks and all that shit are. So, um, the process of dark spawn reproduction is a little kind of wacky. No, um, they rake. Yeah, basically, human women are like, well, not just human women, it can be dwarf, canary, uh, elf, all that sort of women. stuff. Women. Yeah, all women. <laughs> Um, they're basically Where they should be. they're basically some unsanitary stuff happens to them, oh. and through like vigorous days of this process, they are turned into what is called a brood mother, <laughs> and brood mothers can produce thousands of darts at a time. <laughs> I want to so, be a brood mother. So a human a human brood mother produces herlocks, and herlocks are just painted humans, kind of. They're like they're these kind of orcs from like kind of Tolkieny orc looking things with mm. like gray skin and shit. Uh, a genlock is what a dwarf. Um, Broodmother pr uh, produces, and they're shorter. They're sta a squatter, um, and they can like they, they basically like run around and just fucking do shit. Yeah. Um, they're usually archers. Elven broodmothers produce shrieks, which are these tall, nimble things with claws, and they run around kind of like werewolves and shit, and just tear through shit. Um, and they still use magic. Yeah. Um, later on, like in the first game, shrieks are kind of just seen as bestial things. In Inquisition and Dragon Age 2, they're retconned to be just like tall herlocks, tall slim herlocks. Thank the motherfucker from uh, Infinity War that could like bend metal and shit. Oh they shit, kinda, that guy? Yeah, they kind of look like him just with big ears. <laughs> I hated him, he looked like faces. a scrotum. And then ogres, which are formed from Kunari broodmothers. Um, Kunari broodmothers produce a lot less than other broodmothers, but ogres are fucking big. They're these big tanks. Dude, ogres creatures. are badass. Because oh, yeah. they're called ogres? Yes. They they're big, like they have Greg. huge horns, they look like, no, they don't actually look anything they're, they're, like fucking no. Drake. <laughs> I know. Anyway, so those are the types of dark spawn. And, um, fucking Dumont manages to escape, and the Grey Warns are like, well, shit. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Negative 255 Ancient. The Paragon Caradin, uh, Paragon is a dwarf who rises to a status in the Dwarven community, and when you're named a Paragon, it's like being named a fucking war hero or something like Commander that. Commander Shepard. Um, not anything to do with Mass Effect, actually. <laughs> uh, but Paragons are named whenever someone makes a big technological leap or they're a really good warrior or something like that. So Paragon Caradin, uh, he's known for making the Anvil of the Void, or the Forge of the Void, something like that. Um, basically, forge. he discovers a way to forge a living weapon made out of rock and steel called a golem. Yo. And these golems, the, he's a dwarf, so these golems start fucking up Darkspawn in the Deep Roads. Um, we learn later... That like, it was it was said that Caradin just basically fucking disappeared. We don't know what happened to him, and with him disappeared the anvil of the void. What really happened is the process of making a golem is you have to have a human soul. So you basically sacrifice this dwarf to make a golem, put it inside the rock, and they become. There is a character. There is a DLC uh, companion. Sven, or not Sven. No, uh, Shell. Shell. Yeah. There is a DLC companion who is a golem. And you learn, like, after you do her personal quests, you learn that she is, um... She, like, she slowly becomes remembering, like, oh my god, I was a fucking dwarf once. And you go to her old home, and it's like... I'm a monster! <laughs> it's, it's really cool, but yeah, so basically, that's what Caridon was like. He's like, it's very unethical to put people in these fucking big suits and just, like, deprive them of their humanity, or their dwarven anity. Uh, <laughs> and, their um, soul. Their and ethics, their morals. Motherfucker, the king is like, dude, um, you We're disagree. Your the, yeah, the king's like, dude, um, I don't want more golems, actually. So if you're not going to listen to me, I'm just going to make you into a golem, and we're going to keep, uh... Get we're troll! Keep that. So Caradon's made into an iron golem, but Caradon's like, fuck this shit, man. He takes the anvil of the void, fucks off with all of his golems, and he goes into the deep roads. So golems, in, like, the same century that they're made, also become lost. <laughs> Rip. Yep. So they still like exist? They still exist, yes. And There's you can find old dwarven types, yes. Yes. Do you think they're still being made? Um, the, so. the, whether or not they're still being made depends on decisions that you make in Origins. Oh. Are they still being made in Eclipse? We don't know. Oh. We'll get to it. Okay. Because when I go to the games, it's going to be chronicling my canon, basically. 
So, um, yep, Carabin disappears seven years after making the well, uh, so there's a finite amount of them, essentially. And the year negative 203 ancient, two very important things happen in the, this year right here, negative 203 ancient. First thing is, the first flight ends. Second thing is, Andros stays born. Yo! So, <sighs> let me tell you about the process of killing your archdemon. An archdemon must be killed by a Grey Warden. This is because whenever something that isn't a Grey Warden kills an archdemon, the soul just goes into the nearest dark spawn and fucking fucks off, right? If the soul of an archdemon, or if an archdemon is killed by a Grey Warden, the soul goes into the Grey Warden and they are both destroyed. Oh. So, in the process of becoming a legendary hero of the Grey Wardens, you also fucking kill yourself. Yeah, like, that's worse though, dude. It's, it's true. I Here's the thing. There's a way to circumvent this. There's a dark ritual. Where if you conceive a child... Same. If you conceive a child the night before you kill the Archdemon, that soul will go into the child, and the child will be in what is called an Old God baby. An Old God baby has the soul of an Old God in them, which okay. is an Archdemon soul. I want to play an Old God baby. So, Few things about Dumont's killing. We don't know the warden that killed Dumont. In the same year that Dumont dies, Andraste is born. Andraste goes on to become the Jesus Christ figure. Holy shit! <laughs> it is my. This is all me, by the way. It's my personal fucking theory that Andraste is an old god baby. We do get. Um, there's an armor set in Dragon Age Awakening, which is a DLC for Origins. That's like. Um, uh, it's called the Sentinel Armor Set. And the lore behind it is, it was the armor of the warden that killed Dumont. But it never says what happened to that warden. So, I'm pretty sure that this motherfucker fucked some bitch, went and killed Dumont. Dumont's soul went into Andraste, and he gave her visions. He pretended to be the maker, and got her to form the Chantry, or the way of the Andraste. Holy fuck! <laughs> so, I like that theory. Uh, I like that guard theory. babies get, like, fucking special things that happen. We don't know. Or, or I mean, we, know they, we know they have weird dreams. Or they well, just have kind of base. Because I'm thinking right that they're just fucking babies who are just called old god babies. They're just normal babies. It's weird because we know they get weird dreams. There have been two, if my theory is correct, there have been a total of two old god babies we know about. So dreams are connected to people coming to Fade, right? Yes. So And as you remember, the old gods come from the Fade. Uh, my theory right now is that old god babies are like more magical and shit, you know? Or just more like fucking magical poop. Yeah, since they have, like, fake shit going mm -hmm. on there. Because they're, like, fucking... Anyway, so... I mean, it would make sense, because Andraste is a fucking badass. Yeah. Yeah, negative 105 ancient... But she ancient, is cool. She's chill. Negative 195 ancient. The dwarves keep getting fucked over by dark spawn refugees <laughs> that go underground and start fucking them up again. Um, the dwarves get other societies to sign these ancient treaties, which, in the case of another fight, uh, another blight, would force them to, war to aid the wardens. Most people signed these treaties because they were like, there's not going to be another blight. Most people at this point were like, motherfucker lasted two centuries, we just beat it, all that shit's gone, we don't have to worry about it anymore. No so they, the, war, the wardens come up, would you sign this treaty that means you will help us in the case of another blight? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, they were very wrong about another blight, and we're up to five now. <laughs> and as remember, there are seven old gods, so we're limited. We're limited on the number of blights we can't have, but they're more than one. Um, okay, so there's a negative 193 uh, ancient. There's this ma Magister Sidereal, who's kind of like half dark. He's, he's one of the Magister Sidereal that went into the Fade, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like a weird half dark spawn tall guy, and his name is motherfucking Corypheus. And Corypheus, they realize that whenever they kill the wardens, they're like trying to kill this Corypheus dude. He, like an old god, just goes into another body. And even when he's killed by a warden, he becomes, like, the warden he, that killed him, he goes into their body and just becomes Corypheus again. This motherfucker is powerful. They haven't seen anything like this. So they use magic to just seal Corypheus away in this prison because they can't fucking kill him. Um, anyway, that's what we need to know about Corypheus. So, so he's Wait. just in there? Yes. Just like and every, I think it's every century, um, they need to use, uh, like, another mage needs to perform a blood magic ritual to keep Corypheus sealed away. So does he just sit there? This like, comes oh, into God. play right around here. Does he play cards in there, do you think? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. Because there's something else. Actually, we don't know. 
I think he might just be either sleeping the entire time or it's like cryogenesis. Okay, I hope that. I think he's so awake. Is, is he aware of, like, of the time like, that passed? I don't know. Okay. Do you think? Because when he eventually wakes up, he's like, he wakes up, he's kind of like a confused old man. He's like, Dumat, where the fuck are you? Why can't I hear you, Dumat? Because remember, Corypheus is the high priest of Dumat. And he's confused when he wakes up. So I don't think he's aware that he, how long he sleeps. Mm. Um, hmm. Anyway, um, okay. uh, I think uh, about six years later, uh, seven years later, Andraste starts preaching for the Maker. Um, and the Maker is basically this uh, monotheistic deity that is said to have created everything, and he turned his back on the world because he was like, man, this shit sucks. Um, he created spirits first. He was like, spirits are too monotone. Then he created humans, and humans started fucking raping and killing each other. And he was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. No, humans suck. Um, and kids. when I say humans in that context, I refer to all of the species, basically. And, and then they were like, we're going to go and trade. And then, and then the, the demons. <laughs> on in real life. <laughs> so Andraste basically starts worshipping this maker and spreading the word. And she, like Jesus, gains a holy following. Um, Andraste's husband's husband, Mathura, pushes the Imperium out of Ferelden inciting slave uprisings. So the Imperium got fucked over by the Darkspawn. They're getting furtherly fucked over by Matharath and Andraste. Uh, negative 171 Ancient. This elven slave, an escaped elven slave named Shartan, fights alongside Matharath and wins a battle against Kavinter. He is made into a disciple of Andraste, one of her like biggest heralds, essentially. Hmm. Negative 170 Hell. Ancient. One year after Shartan arrives, Matharath makes a deal with the Imperium. Mathrath, Andraste's husband, um, and the Imperium's like, we're desperate, uh, we really need you to stop fucking shit up, essentially. Please stop. Um, I don't know what exactly they promised him, but Mathrath eventually turned in Andraste to the Imperium, and the Imperium burned her at the stake, uh, and killed Andraste. Hmm. So, based. Yep. Um. How based, bro? I love really get burned at the fucking stake. <laughs> yes. So, five years later, Andraste's army disperses, and Matharath rules southern Thetis and, divide, and divides the rest between his three sons. The elves are given a new homeland in the Dales, and they begin a long walk to their new home, kind of like the Trail of Tears. This yep. is where they become very Native American-like. Um, negative 160 ancient. Tevinter converts to Andraste's faith. Why? I don't fucking know. I think because the Archon, like, here's how it's sort of pseudo-explaining the Codex entries. The Archon at the time basically felt bad about killing Andraste. He was like, uh, uh, that's kind of eating at my tummy a little bit. I mean, so we're, we're, we're going to adopt the champion. Okay. Yeah. So he, he just felt bad about killing Andraste. He was like, well, uh, we also worship her religion now. Um, and that was, what, a total of, uh, yeah, ten years after she died. <laughs> I mean, that's ten years of yeah, bread building up. Yeah, also, uh, you gotta remember at this time, Tevinter is basically faithless because they just learned that their old gods fucking betrayed them, essentially. Um, so Tevinter's kind of faithless. They're kind of <laughs> desperate for a new faith. So All right. Atheism or uh, Catholicism? <laughs> <laughs> Which one? <laughs> More okay. More Negative 400 <laughs> ancient. The first Inquisition is founded. An Inquisition is a, an order that is established to bring order to the world. It's kind of fucking weird what exactly an inquisition is. We also know that it's a religious organization that follows Andraste's words. So, negative 100 ancient, first inquisition cool. is founded. <laughs> negative 45 ancient, or this is where Orzammar seals itself off, becoming the only dwarf in the city left. Uh, negative 44 ancient, Ravain is founded. Ravain is a cool pirate uh, nation that's to the northeast of Ferelden. Okay. It's very cool. Um, it's based off, I believe it's based off of... Um, Morocco. <laughs> not, not Mar uh, what is what is Ravain inspired by? Because you know, Antibas, Antibas is a weird mix of Italy and Spain. Um, I don't know, but Ravain has a lot of probably the Caribbean Isles, I think, or something like that. And anyway, it's based off like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm gonna bang a pirate. Uh, uh, Fourteen years later, Antiva becomes a, a which is a city state. It becomes a nation. Negative twenty five ancient. One of Tevinter's imperious, um, Imperium's slave cities, Marius, rebels and becomes the independent city-state of Kirkwall. So, uh, Kirkwall is basically the first city in the Free Marches, which is just north of Ferelden, uh, separated by a big river. Um, 
And you remember, Amarius is where the Magister Sidereal broke the veil. So the veil is very weak in Kirkwall, and that's why a lot of fucking demons just sort of show up there Let's sometimes. go. Let's go. They probably have to pop out and go into yeah, the um, Negative 15 Ancient. Um, a, there's a secret dwarven tide called Kalsharak, which is also sealed away, but nobody knows that it still exists, because it has no contact with the surface world. So Kalsharak still exists. It's the only other dwarven city that exists, but no one knows about it, because it's just sort of under the ground, and hmm. off the radar. How did we find out about it? Um, we find out about it in the Age of the Dragon, because it re-emerges. Yeah. Negative three ancient. Um, so by this time, yeah, Cordillus Dracon becomes the first emperor of the newly founded nation Orlay, which is just west of Ferelden. And he, he creates the Chantry, because he's a big simp for Androste and faith. Oh. So God. it's built on the beliefs of Androste and the worship of the Maker. Which means if you're following my fucking theory, my fucking crackpot theory about Andraste being an old god baby, um, Dumont has tricked the entire world into thinking he is a godlike figure that will bring Classic peace Dumont. to the world. Classic Dumont. Yeah. He is the He's god of secrets. Dragon of secrets yeah. So, with the founding of the Chantry, Dracon decides it's time for a new calendar, and he forms uh, the this fucking big old calendar with all the ages. <laughs> um, the Divine, which is the leader of the Chantry, the first Divine is named, her name is Divine Justinia I. <laughs> um, whenever you become a Divine, you sort of take on a name. So we don't know if Divine Justinia's name was Justinia or if she took on that name. Because instead, most of them take on a new name when they become Divine. But, they become um, a new person. Yeah, basically. Baptism. Anyway, so the Divine Age has started, the Chantry's founded, everything's cool. Four years later, the second blight begins. Oh, <laughs> yeah! Oh, so this girl cannot get a fucking drink <laughs> for any amount of time. Dude. A year, maybe? And they, right, right. And the road just goes, all right, well, fuck it. Um, so, yeah, it. we're in the divine age now, by the way. Divine Justinia. Like, the new divine, or the divine of the time, they always name the new age, like, the year before it comes, basically. Or sometimes a few years before. But anyway, she names it the divine age after the chantry. Five years in, the second blight begins. Uh, and shit <laughs> he starts getting wacky. He gets real. Uh, the old god this time is Zazakel, the dragon of chaos. Oh. Uh. Um, abandoned. Tevinter is like, um, Tevinter at this time is basically like, we got too much land to fight for and not enough people. So they abandon the Anderfells and just sort of fucking kick them out of the Imperium. <laughs> Anderfell. Um, and basically the Tevinter becomes smaller. Yep. Um. Classic Byzantine Empire. 116 Divine. Dracon allows mages to use their magic against Darkspawn, proving uh, proving they could be useful. Because one of Andraste's biggest teachings was that magic is meant to serve man, not rule over it. And this got a lot of fucking uh, support when the Tevinter Imperium rolled fucking everywhere because they were a magocracy. Magic, a, a lot of the time, mages, um, and mages like ever since the Deventer Imperium basically got smaller and smaller and got rebelled against. It's got shafted. Mages have been, like, outcasted, basically. They've just been they've fucking been, railed they've been every single day. They've been, yeah, they're basically a persecuted group, even innocent mages. Um, uh, anyway, the Chantry, Chantry's like, uh, or Dracon's like, we can, mages can be cruel. Look, guys, they're helping us fight the dark spawn. So four years later, uh, 120, 120 Divine, the Chantry and the Inquisition signed the Navarran Accord. Um, senior Inquisition members become the Seekers of Truth, Circle of Magi is created, and so are the Templar Order. So what the fuck did I just say? Um, the Navarran Accord is basically what founds the Circle and the Order. Um, the Templar? It's basically like saying, yeah, mages, they're cool. We can have Circles of Magi, which are big towers that have all of our mages in them. Um, however, we also have to form this sect, uh, this order called the Templar Order, they are knights that use Lyrium for, like, epic superpowers, basically. And Templars are always guarding the Circle of Magi, and if shit goes wrong, if they even get a hint of blood magic, they can enact the Rite of Annulment and kill every single mage in the fucking tower. Um, so yeah. Uh, okay. mages are okay. kind of, mages are kind of free, they're in their circle, but also, we've got a fucking knife up to your throat and you better not do anything that even looks suspicious. To be uh, fair, it is blood magic. You go, you turn into a demon. Yeah, yeah. So the Chantry doesn't want to take... They have a good reason to do it. Yeah, no, Chantry like doesn't want to take... What, what virgin? Chantry doesn't want to take I any Templars, fucking so chances. Um, they don't even give so it yeah. cool. Um, the Templars are all bad. The Templars no, are all, all bad. Founded. No, they're not bad. 
I They're just trying to defend humanity. Not all mages yeah. are bad, just the blood mages. Yeah. That's a good point. Exactly. And you know what? The Templars won't Not all Templars are bad, just the just ones the that ones are that cut. Mages. Yeah. yeah, which is like all of them. Also, Templars, <laughs> no, 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 the they use Lyrium to fuel their the powers. The blood mages and acolytes. Uh, the mages ma- like, that talk shit. <laughs> Templar, <laughs> powers, <laughs> Templar powers revolve around uh, countering magic. Um, so they're basically like mage slayers in D&D. Like, they can just fuck you up. They can like completely negate magical powers. And they do this with the use of Lyrium. Lyrium is highly addictive, and people who get kicked out of the Templar like order, heroin. basically, people who get kicked out of the Templar order for whatever fucking reason become uh, Lyrium withdrawals, and usually this ruins your fucking life, because uh, you have to like either get Lyrium off the fucking black market or something like that. It usually kills you. It's like a drug addiction. Cool. Anyways, yeah, Lyriums are basically cocaine-addled uh, heralds of the fucking chantry. Hmm. So yeah. it's just like a so it's basically so, so, so like, it's like an owl, it's like a right like. A, it's basically like a bunch of soldiers just hyped up on cocaine and that the Chantry uses. Yeah, and they're basically yeah, bound to the Chantry because the Chantry's like, we got your fucking Mario, you better not go. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ooh, a bag of crystal meth. So yeah. And also the Inquisition. So, Inquisition basically becomes the Seekers of Truth. Seekers of Truth are like Templar generals. Um, they basically meditate for a long fucking time, and they eventually gain spirit warrior abilities through a process that we'll go over later. Anyway, what happens to the Inquisition? Basically, the Inquisitor at the time is a man named Inquisitor Emeridan. Inquisitor is not his first name. <laughs> and he is an elf. No one fucking knows this anymore. Nobody, like in the modern day, basically nobody knows that Emeridan was an elf because of something that happens in the Forward Age. Did he lose his but elf Inquisitor Emeridan is an elf, and he is sent by Emperor Dracon to investigate something in the Frostback Basin, which is in southern Ferelden, where basically a bunch of Avars, Avars are one of the Ferelden tribes, uh, they worship spirits on the other side of the Fade. And one of, their, one of the big spirits they worship, called Hakon Winter's Breath, um, the Avars basically uh, body, put its spirit into a dragon. So now the Avars are following Hakon, they're called the Jaws of Hakon, the specific tribe that worships uh, Winter's Breath. Um, they call the Jaws of Hakon, and um, they they worship Hakon uh, as their god because it's a spirit. It's their god. I've been thinking about thirty-two fucking times in the last few <laughs> seconds, and now my brain is fucking frazzled. And this dragon is basically a spirit warrior, but a dragon. So the Inquisition is uh, the Inquisition is sent there to deal with it. Inquisitor Emeridan's like, I can't fucking deal with it. But Inquisitor Emeridan's a mage, so what he does is he locks himself and Hakon into an endless duel, essentially. Like, he freezes Hack on there in time, but he has to keep this spell going. So for literally fucking centuries, everyone just thinks that Emeridan disappeared. When in reality, he's sitting in the Frostbite Basin, holding Hack on at bay, so that he doesn't fuck up the world. Does he sleep? No. Um, he is, must be so fucking He's bored. implied to have been very connected to the Fade, and he has super magical powers. He must be so he's the bored. second fucking devil baby. <laughs> no, there is no... Or the third. Um, okay. Anyway, so yeah, that's sort of what happens there. there Seekers, the the Inquisition recently. turns into the Seekers of Truth, which are uh, Templar generals, and they, they don't take Lyrium really for their powers, their spirit abilities. That's not cool. Uh, 125 Divine. The Dale Elves ignore Orlais' pleas for help against the Blight, because the Dale Elves are like, well, you humans <laughs> fucked us up. They were like, humans fucked us up in the past, so we don't want to help humans, actually. We're just going to stick to the Dale Lands. Orlay never forgets this. <laughs> so Orlay will remember this. Yes, Orlay will remember this. We did. Hey, we did. We didn't forget what you did. You can. You can remember. Hey, all right. It wasn't Orlay. It was the Imperium. <laughs> we don't fucking know. You're all human. <laughs> you all look the same. One thirty-three divine. The stronghold Weishaupt, capital of the Grey Warden Order. It's located in the Anderfels. Uh, it is relieved of darkspawn attacks by our Legion forces, and the wardens are impressed enough to convert to the Chantry. Uh, the combined forces defend the Anderfels and establish the Chantry as the main religion of Anderfels. So the Warden's are religious? Yes. No? They're kind of religious, yeah. They, or at least they follow the Chantry. Oh, Even okay. though the Chantry was founded in Orlay, the Anderfels are arguably bigger worships, worshippers of the Chantry because it basically saved their fucking homeland. Mm. Um, 140 Divine. A man named Hafter unites the Alamari tribes in Ferelden, being named the first Tanner. Um, so after, where am I right now, up here? Where, oh wait, that's the age. Uh, so 140, after, basically kind of unites the Alamari, and they become what will be Ferelvins. Alright, 
Divine for anything else. Mm -hmm. 145 Divine. Uh, Emperor Dracon dies to old age, and Tiva converts to the champion. Hell. Oh, uh, Divine Justinia the first. She does a mission trip to Antiva. And she's still alive. Yeah, she's. I think that old still bitch. Alive. It's, it's probably her. I want to say it's still her. Actually, wait. Well, we're fifty years in. It can still be her. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she, uh, she goes on a mission trip to Antiva, and they convert to the Chantry as well. <laughs> One fifty. Uh, Hafter defeats the combined forces of the Chaven, uh, the Chasen, and the Avalis. One sixty-five. Divine. The Anderfels gained independence. That's kind of weird, because the Anderfels were always independent. Anderfels, we don't really know what the fuck they're doing. I mean, that's, <laughs> it's very weirdly written down there. <laughs> I like the <laughs> idea, right? <laughs> that the Anderfels, right? The, these people just walk into, like, Orle and like, Hey, yo, we're, we're just claiming independence. And then Orle is like, Cool. <laughs> you are... Again? Okay. <laughs> he was like, bitches, you were already fucking independent. <laughs> Orle just goes... Yeah. Good for you! <laughs> we never would have um, suspected you to do that. Anyway, the Anderfels, the Anderfels yeah, also, job. you know, the uh, Weishaupt is the main warden fortress there. The Anderfels sort of becomes the homeland of the Grey Wardens. Okay. 195 is Divine. The Second Blight is finally defeated after Zazakel is, is slain by a Grey Warden in the city state of Starkhaven. Starkhaven is another city state in the Free Marches. They're basically, they have Scottish actions. Oh, my gracious, I'm my good Anyway, that's the Divine Age and sort of the Ancient Age wrapped up. We've got a lot of early stuff covered. Does anyone have any questions before I move on? When does the Glory Age start? Right now. Woo! <laughs> okay. Why so. is the game called Dragon Age? Because the dragons because and you age. Dragon age. How long have we been in the Dragon Age for? Good question. Um... Does Forty-five years. Question: Does Shit. the Inquisition uh, have to do with Dragon Age Inquisition? No, no relation whatsoever. <laughs> okay, I'll just uh, double check. Okay, um, so the Glory Age is one of the ages we don't know a lot about. You see here, I only have three bullet points written down, and they all take place in the first half of the century, the first fifth even. So, um, basically, the Divine—I forget who it is. I think it's Divine Renata the First. She names the new age glory after uh, she's like it'll be a time of rebuilding after the second light fucked us Why all not? up. <laughs> Nothing yeah, ever goes right in Dragon Age. And the next day, right? And the next light. day, the third flight begins. <laughs> no. And never death. Um. So two five glory. Orle and the Dales start having border disputes. This all relates to a city called a little town called Red Crossing. Where an emerald knight, an emerald knight is an elven warrior of old, who's basically like an elven templar. They're kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this emerald knight, he starts meeting this human girl, and they fall in love, basically. Aww. And it's like a Romeo and Juliet story. Oh, yeah. Anyway, like through some convoluted events, she ends up getting killed by elves. The humans are like, "Fucking what?" And the Dales and Orle goes to war. So, um, you killed us. <laughs> How could two, you? She was a traitor. Two, Glory, Divine Renata the First calls for the first ever Exalted March in all of history. An Exalted March is a crusade. So, she calls... <laughs> the Holy City! <laughs> she calls an Exalted March... And also, Divines and, um... Divines and Enchanted Priests, they can only be women. Uh, we don't know why, it's probably something to do with Andraste, because Andraste was a woman. But if you're a priest in the Chantry, you can only be a woman. Yeah. Yo! Yeah. Wait, Pop? Yeah. Yeah. Women. I'll get new I goal. think. Well, there can be like lowly uh, clerics and stuff there, man. But like, if you're like a revered mother or a divine, you have to be a, a, a woman. Why is that? If I may um, ask probably that. something to do with how Andraste was a woman. That's kind of lame. Uh, yeah, but also it makes sense because yeah. <laughs> Base. Okay, women. so divine or not, the first calls for an exalted march against the Dales. Um, the their opponents were uh, fierce, and a quick victory was not expected. So they knew they were going to the long war when this fucking started. Um, Hafter's grandson, Ter Cadman, Taren Cadman, declares himself king of Ferelden, and everyone's like, "No, fuck you!" So a civil, <laughs> a civil war. No way. <laughs> yeah, a civil war. Like we liked your, we liked your grandpa, but you're not cool. You're not based like him. No, so a civil war, way. a civil war starts in Ferelden, and they're basically reversed back to the Alamari tribes. <laughs> Why do they Become always civilized. just get fucked, man? It's just like a go back. I want to be monkey. But they don't want to be monkey. Anyway, two ten glory. Ten years later, 
The Dales finally fall to the Exalted March. This is like the only Exalted March of history that ever worked out for the Chantry. Like real crusades. <laughs> um, this is the only one that matters, though. Yes. We fucked over the elves. And I elves are given good. places and cities called alienages. Most elves reject Oklahoma. this, however, and they become nomadic tribes known as the Dalish. Oklahoma. It's like, hey guys, we're kind of like when we lived in the Dales. We're Dalish, and that's where the word Dalish came from. Um, <laughs> Renata, <laughs> Divine, <coughs> Divine Renata the First rewrites the story. She basically starts erasing Dallas elves from Trump. history. Um, everything good that elves did in the history of the Chantry, she was like, no, actually those weren't elves. You remember Shartan, who I talked about earlier? Uh -huh. All of uh, all of Shartan's statues, they have their ears rounded off, so Shartan, um, they basically erased the fact that he was ever an elf from uh, Chantry. Even, well, though, the even though everyone knows it, the Chantry erases it, and they erase records of elves. Huh. <clears throat> and that's why a lot of people don't know that Inquisitor of Meriden was an elf. Huh. So... That's the end of the glory age. Any questions about that? Imagine being Inquisitor Aaron and coming back, right, after kicking that dragon's ass. <laughs> Just to see all the shit that went down. He's like, guys, what the fuck? I was gone for a couple of centuries. Okay, um, so we're going to take a pause. We're going to take a break right there. My oh, good, I got a potty. The voice is getting a little coarse. I need to get some water. So, all right, we'll be right back. Fucking. 64. 63. Two, Tell me in the comments if he's recording. 60, right now. 59, 58. Can you shut the fucking dead up? <laughs> Stop watching Windows. Hold on! They uh, just broke the barrier, you asshole. Fucking why are you not pausing? Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, we're done. <laughs> He wanted, oh, a, he wanted oh, a countdown. Oh, he got. That entire time. Yeah, for a little bit. For a little bit. Yeah. It's about 30 seconds in. Alright. So. The next age is named the Age of the Towers because there were Chantry Towers that you could see all around. Why? So there's, yeah, this is where uh, what that is so fucking lame. That wouldn't be under the glory, ancient, divine towers. <laughs> towers and then um, black. Again, and then black. <laughs> 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 they get a little less creative. That's like they get fucking bored. Ancient, divine, <laughs> glory towers. Black, <laughs> exalted, steel, so, storm. Uh, yeah, today the towers. Yes. Was, the chantry was getting really big, and there were so many towers all over the place. So, um, uh, ten years into the towers' age, uh, the third blight began. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, man. Who the fuck was like, all right, boys? Well, hang on, the blight starts in the towers. The, the third blight begins. So is glory the like blight free? Yeah, glory, not a blight. Okay, okay. well, it was called glory for that reason. Yeah. <laughs> that, notice how the grace period has so far been the, the fucking least documented yeah. era. Yeah, <laughs> because nothing actually fucking happened. Okay. Um, 318 Towers. The Wardens did a good job at combating the Darkspawn to the north and the south. So it spread to the east. Uh, it spread east to the Three Marches. No! Uh, pressure from the Grey Wardens forced the Imperium and Orlais to help out the Three Marches. No problem. No problem. So... If they're in a tenuous alliance right now. 325 towers. So Toth is the uh, dragon of fire, and he's the arch demon for this uh, for this age or for this blight. Mm. It was reportedly stronger in numbers than the first two blights, but so far it's been uh, so far out of the three that we've documented. So right now it's been the shortest one. It's only 15 years. Um, so 325. Towers, Toth is slain in Hunterfell, which is a little town in the uh, Three Marches. Uh, Blight only lasted 15 years, making it the shortest. Hmm. Uh, we do know that for both uh, Toth and um, uh, what was the fucking Zazakel, or Zazakel, um, those archdemons were for sure killed by Grave Wardens, and the Grave Wardens did die afterwards. So, no old god babies for these last two. No! Towers... Uh, 365, Navara breaks from Orle. So Navara, it's based, I think it's another, no, it's, it's another country, it's, but it's located near the Three Marches, and it breaks away from Orle. Um, Navara, uh, it's kind of like Austria, I think is what it's based off of. We've only seen one real Navaran character, and her voice actress does a really good job at making up a weird fantasy accent for the character, so much so 
that I think she's actually going to have to, like, fucking coach people who play Navarin citizens in the future, because the accent she made for Cassandra was so fucking weird. Um, Cassandra's then, from Navarro? Yeah. No. Uh, she's actually part of the Pentagast family, which is the most prominent family in Navarro. Bro, I banged her. Nice. And then a bull. Me too, but you're alive. Um, 387 Towers. The Deventer Imperium formed their own version of the Chant of Light. The Chant of Light is basically what the uh, Chantry follows. And Deventer, basically, their Chantry breaks away from the normal Chantry. This is all because Divine, uh, let me see, Divine Joyous II. She is really big on the fuck magic policy of the mm. Watch her. She is all about, like, magic sucks and we fucking hate magic. And the Chantry was like, or Tevinter was like, Chantelite kind of makes mages sound bad, and it kind of ma- puts Deventer in a negative light because we like started the blights and everything. Like, oh, can we change some of this? And she was like, "No, fuck mages." So uh, the Deventer, um, they they form their own chantry. It's called the Black Chantry. Uh, <laughs> um, you are not laughing. <laughs> I'm putting you in the spotlight for this. <laughs> you are not laughing at Black Chantry. It was pretty funny. <laughs> I have to admit, I didn't expect Black. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's what the new the uh, so the Tevinter Chantry it claims that the second sin and the first blight were not related whatsoever. They just happened to happen in the same year, mm. and actually the magisters were cool people. Mm. Um, and they're they're also like mages are cool, and the divine of so they they basically wanted the black chantry to be the complete opposite of the normal chantry. So the, the divine and the priests of the Deventer Chantry, which is just what I'm going to call it now, they, um, they're all mages and they're all men. Whereas before, oh. Oh. Um, every divine, every priestess was a woman. Um, now they're like, they just want to separate themselves as much as they can from the old So it's like exactly fucking opposite. Yeah, so exactly the opposite. Mage men. Men and men. Um, and the, uh, uh, the... Divine of the Tevinter Chantry is called the Black Divine. <laughs> You're not um, laughing at that. Um, no also, way. Also, Divine Joyous II, she was the divine that basically caused the split because of her views. Um, her death is a holiday in Tevinter. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Thatcher. <laughs> basically, she's Let's Margaret go! <laughs> um, 399 Towers. The New Age is named the Black Age because the Tevinter mm. Chantry is called the Black Chantry. Mm. Black Age is the uh, second least documented age, at least according to my notes. Wait, the what? Second least documented okay, age. Sorry. What age? Uh, so, 440 Black. <laughs> okay, that, that one got me. I, I will not lie. I will not lie. You cannot say it like that. You say 440. <laughs> Us. It doesn't help that it's four white kids laughing at this. <laughs> <laughs> we should have had Peyton here for this one. We really should have. Um, Obama. Okay. So Obama was the best president. 440 is the start. <laughs> 440 <laughs> is the start of the exalted marches against Tevinter. So the chantry. All right, class. I'm passing out demerits all around. Class, class. John Ross, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, we have old mom the best president. So, um, 440 is the start of the Chantry calling four different exalted marches on Tevinter's Chantry. Or Tevinter in general. Because they're like, hey, come back, guys, please. And 440 like, exalted? No, 440 black. <laughs> <laughs> He got you right there, man. <laughs> I did. I knew what he was doing, but I fucking I had to clarify. Because the next age is the exalted age. So, um, basically, this is this this is the year where they start calling exalted marches against Deventer. Mm. 480. Orle invades Ferelden, but they fail. Mm-hmm. They fail at taking it over because right now Ferelden is a bunch of little stupid tribes that fight back. Because like we're the, the Black Age is all of <laughs> Don't be doing any Fortnite dances on him just yet, because Orle comes back. <laughs> So the Black Age is all about Orlais being like, we don't like The Black Age is all about Chantry, the Tevinter versus the Chantry, Orlais versus Ferelden. Bad shit happens. Don't zoom in on me. (laughs) Wow, I guess it's like... So, 
For, thank God this is the fucking least documented age, because we would not have been able to get to it if it was as long as this motherfucker right here. So, 499 black. Yeah, fucking I said it. Divine Justinia the second chooses the name for the exalted age for the next age, seeing as thank the Marquis. Thank God she knew not to name it after that. <laughs> she didn't name it the white. Imagine, age. yeah, imagine it, it was like towers black white. <laughs> So she Remember names it the exalted. That would be really funny. She names it the exalted age because at this time, I think the fourth and final exalted march against Tevinter is still going on. Uh, Five ten exalted. That exalted march fails, and uh, with it, all all four exalted marches against Tevinter have failed, hmm. like the Crusades. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of them is succeeded. All the rest fail. Mm. So moving on to the exalted age. Um, five. 512 Exalted, the fourth blight begins. <laughs> they can't get a fucking blight. Made sure to skip black. Um, <laughs> they did. They, um, they the, old god, the old god Anderal becomes the next archdemon. He is the dragon of slaves. Hmm. And Tiva, and Tiva is... <laughs> Fuck! Fuck, <laughs> We need, uh, uh, we need to cut this fucking lecture. We're not right done here. The Black Age, they go, all right, guys, pull it up, right? We got to fight. Right? If they would have never been, if they would have not been, right? They would have been canceled. Dragon Knights would have been canceled on Twitter the second. <laughs> The Dark Spawn didn't want to get Twitter canceled, so they held off for, uh... They're like, hey guys, wait a minute! <laughs> I'm about to make a Twitter account, call it Herlock57, saying, thank God we did not invade during the Black Age. <laughs> we didn't use the slave. Okay. <laughs> okay. Antiva is soon overrun. Dark Spawn then attacked the Anderfels, the Free Marches, and Ravain. Tevinter does not lend any aid due to the Exalted Marches. Fuck you, Tevinter. Uh, 516 Exalted. At the age of 19, Divine Rosamund becomes the youngest divine in history. She was groomed for the position by Divine Rosamund. <laughs> groomed. Pardon? Groomed. Uh, um, yeah. 520 Exalted. Uh, do I have it up there? No, I do not. The Elven Grey Warden, Garahel, leads the fight against the Fourth Blight. He and his soldiers freed the city of Hosford. The minor kings of the Free Marches were united against the Blight in Starkhaven, and their armies were led by Garahel. So basically, Garahel's like, all this political bullshit's happening. No one's helping me out with the Blight. I'm just going to go help all the peasants, and we're going to deal with this fucking Blight at mm. this point. Like He's the like, peasant I, crusade. This is basically, the Blight, after this Blight, the Free Marches basically becomes its own entity because of Garahel had to use them to destroy the Blight. So, uh, 524 Exalted. Aisley marks the final battle point of the fourth blight, making it the shortest blight now with only 12 years. Thank God. Um, uh, Garahel was killed when he killed um, Zazikel. Or not Zazikel, Anderal. Um, yeah, the minor kings of the free marches were united against the blight in Starkhaven, and their armies were led, against Lincoln, uh, were led by Garahel. Um, after this, griffins start dying out. So before now, uh, no. griffins... Griffins were like the main uh, mount nice. for, for the Grey Wardens. That's how they got places fast, because they used Griffins. Uh, however, Griffins started dying a lot. Why? Um, and they didn't reproduce often. So Garahel's sister was like, what if we put the Griffins to the joint and make them into Grey Wardens? Because they would like theoretically be better at killing Darkspawn. Little does she know, they actually tried this before. And the the fucking griffins just went rabid. So hmm. decided we aren't going to do that anymore. But shit's basically getting, getting fucked at this point. This Might as well try it again. You know? Yeah, this deep she's like, and she's also a blood mage, by the way. It's kind of a secret, because this is all documented in the um, the Dragon Age novel, uh, I think it's called The Last Flight. So, um, blood so far, be good. The Last Flight is the worst fucking novel that has ever been written for Dragon Age. Very I'm just going to come out and say that right now. What <laughs> I'm glad that so, um, yeah, she's no, a blood mage. Uh, uh, what is it? Just like everyone that's she, willing to fight uh, her bitch. She puts okay. the uh, griffins through a joining. However, one of the griffins has a disease, and this mutates into a disease, like a blight disease, because of the joining. So the griffins do their job, and they fucking help kill all the dark spawn very efficiently, very fastly. However, all the griffins die out due to this fucking disease, <laughs> except for one batch of thirteen eggs. And she magically seals these eggs away. Fucking like incubating in the. Oh, yeah. baby. She magically Jurassic she magically seals these eggs away because she's like they're the last Griffins. Maybe centuries down the line will be better and we can take care of them. So yeah, this we is this is known as the third sin. No, it's not. <laughs> um, 
It is to me. So griffins are. I think my character would actually see that. Griffins like are, are technically extinct and, and non-extinct. Yeah, they're technically. They could extinct. be technically. They're like, in yeah, they're just like. They're just right now, for all intents and purposes, right now griffins are extinct. Okay. Um. My character's gonna get a griffin if it's the last thing he does. Five. Well, you probably might be able to. Five forty-two exalted. Kerelden is finally united as its own nation, and Kalanhad Theron becomes the first king of Dinarim. It is said he drank dragon's blood and passed the power through his lineage. Oh, shit. Also, while I'm on the topic of dragon's blood, so there's this subclass or the specialization called the Reapers. Reapers. Yep. <coughs> and they basically drink dragon's blood, and that's how they get all their powers. They're like blood mage, but not yes. cool. Kunari are suspected to be half dragon. Mm. Um... Uh, just bring this up now because it's a nice little thing that I might as well throw in here. Kanari is expected to be half dragon, and they're like maybe old experiments by Deventer, we don't really know. But basically, the reason for this is because the Pentagast family, the Pentagast family were like big reavers, and some of their some of their members that drank a lot of dragon blood started growing like weird scales and horns and shit. Mm. So Similar. I think they might have been turning into proto. So, so, so like in Grandia, it was a guy in the barrel, yes. and he has like a little, or, or the guy who has like a tail, and the guy has wings. Yes, exactly like okay. Grandia. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the only time I'm ever saying that in my entire fucking life. Dragon Age is technically related to Grandia. <laughs> Grandia <laughs> 3. It's all connected. It all rhymes. All the lectures rhyme. Rick actually comes into play in Dragon Age oh, 2. Oh, shit. <laughs> He's just there. He's like, hey, guys. <laughs> okay. That one fairy bitch. Alistair actually went on an Athena's voyage. Yes, oh. he did. That's how he got um, bitches. Wait. Yep. Wait, how many? Uh, dance moms? I don't know how to dance moms. Uh, fucking Divine Rosamund was a dance mom. Oh, shit. I, I don't know. Oh, my God. Trolls. Okay, so speaking of Divine Rosamund, um... 571 Exalted, she dies after 55 years of service. She is regarded as the most compassionate divine ever, and she is uh, replaced by divine Amara III, who was known for bonfires fueled by Maleficarum. Maleficarum are blood mages, basically. Um, she did not rule for long. She was basically a tyrant queen. And nice. she would Fuck go crazy yeah. and, and burn. <laughs> so after the best one, it comes the worst Basically, one. yeah. That's kind of cool. Exalted uh, five or five thirty nine like exalted <laughs> Queen Queen Madrigal of Antigua. Um, first of all, I think I should note here: Queen Madrigal is like Queen Madrigal is the most important like queen of all time for Antigua because she was like Antigua is kind of small, and I don't want people fucking with us, so I'm gonna fuck them and have Yo. a lot of babies. Yo, she, she basically like she had a bunch of children in all the other countries. And through familiar ties, she just made trade ways with Antiva, and Antiva grew to be very prosperous because of her. Well, Antiva's um, hyped. Yeah, Antiva's yeah. hyped. And no one kind of wants to invade them because everyone's kind of related to Antiva. Because she's like, <laughs> man, man, my fucking cousin lives there. Yeah. Man. If, he really if we kill him, we anyway, anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, divine, or Queen Madrigal of Antiva goes missing on a hunting trip. And when her body is recovered, there are four steel blades sticking out of her chest. And oh, this I image think. haunted Divine Theodosia the first. It haunted her dreams so much that she named the New Age the Steel Age after it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically what happened to Queen Madrigal. Hmm. Um, she might have been assassinated by the Antivan Crows, which are a group of assassins based in Antiva. She might have been assassin assassinated by another group called the Executors, who we don't really know much about. It's all kind of weird. We think it's the Antivan Crows, though. That'd be cool. Okay, any questions before I move on? Okay. The Black Age was pretty cool. We're not laughing, we're past it, it's done. <laughs> Alright, that's the last time the word black... That's the last this, time we this, ever... Uh, the, ever. Lo the word black is no longer allowed to be used. Okay. Ever. In history. So, I would just say dark instead. That's um, not even... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <since laughs> Yeah, you, you know, like the dark age. <laughs> <laughs> he looked since, at me and he goes. <laughs> since, uh, the, since divine Theodosia the first was like the first divine who was like, yeah, the next age is probably gonna be fucked up because Queen Madrigal died. Uh, she's the only one that was right, obviously, <laughs> because nothing good ever happens with this. Dude, nothing. And, and the whole fucking like universe is so, kind of named. It's six, always sunny uh, and safe. Six fifteen steel. Uh, three arch demons rise out, and then we have a huge blight NATO. That doesn't actually happen. Six arch demons. Oh, yeah, that doesn't actually happen. 
Uh, it's a 615 skill. Dragons are nearly hunted to extinction by the Pentagast family, the no. Navarran nobles. No! Uh, and they used exotic methods to basically no, slay the creatures. No. Um, okay. I'm gonna have to do it. Okay. No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. 630 steel. The Kunari land in Parvalin and conquer it. Parvalin is a jungle continent. I mentioned it near the beginning. It's to the two shapes. 632 steel. Yeah, 632, uh, 632 steel. The first Kunari war begins as they try to invade southern Thetis. Um, they also take over Saharan and Ravain. Saharan is another jungle island. You guys good over there? <laughs> Get off your phones. Come on. I'm not on my phone. class right now. I was laughing at John Ross. <laughs> well, I was going to make him shoot himself. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Fear your minds. We're, we're, we're getting lectured on Dragon Age War. Come I'm on. sorry, I'm thinking of the Dark Age right now. <laughs> um, 642 Steel. Much of the Imperium, Ravain, and Antiva are overtaken by the Cunari. I, I gotta do something. It has to be done. I'm, I am okay. listening. Uh, 699 Steel. Divine Portentia III names the next age Storm, portending great violence in Thetis. No. So at this point, most of Northern Thetis has been conquered by the Cunari. Um, shit's going bad. The Divine's like, yeah, Storm Age is going to suck, guys, just like the Steel Age. Um, That's what we have to refer to it as. <laughs> <laughs> no, we cannot. You guys done? Yeah, you guys done the horse in the round? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to make John I think himself. so. So, <laughs> I wanted to make John Ross kill himself. Seven five storm. <laughs> Sophia Dryden is made into a Grey Warden after she loses the throne of Ferelden to her cousin Arlen Theron, despite her popularity. Yo, Theron. So, Sophia Dryden uh, was a she was the cousin of uh, Arlen Theron, and the Theron bloodline obviously Callan had Theron founded the Ferelden pretty much, and people are like, yeah. Theron bloodline are kind of cool, and they should be the ones that rule. But then, Arlen Theron is kind of a stinky boy, and no one really Ooh, likes him. He's stinky. Um, and everyone's like, well, his cousin mm -hmm. Sophia Dryden, she's really cool, she's a warrior and everything. Why can't she be queen? She gets a lot of support, but eventually he just crushes her and forces her to become a Grey Warden. Um, Grey Wardens have a strict vow never to engage in political action. Uh, Sophia Dryden breaks this. Until they do. She becomes the Warden Commander of Ferelden. And uh, she has uh, Soldier's Peak, a sort of her fortress. Oh. And she challenges Arlen Theron for the throne again. Arlen's forces start raiding Soldier's Peak for months and months before she's fucking defeated. So, um, like, so, so she was like, all right, Woods, come on in. And yeah. just couldn't fucking win. She basically, she basically broke a Grey Warden oath. She engaged in politics, started a rebellion against Arlen Theron. And it did really well. Like, there were a lot of losses on both sides, but eventually she was defeated at Soldier's Peak. Um, Soldier's Peak was a fortress. It had supplies for literal months. So sieging it for fucking Arland... It, How did they kill um, What did they just have to do? Oh, uh, we don't really know. Alright. Yeah, I know how. <laughs> I play Soldier Peak DLC. I'll use my imagination on how they did it. Okay. It's seven, actually pretty cool DLC. Seven to, it takes three. 30 minutes. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, sure, I'll play it. 725 Storm. The first exalted march on the Cunari is called, and it succeeds. It frees Ravain. First exalted march we've had in fucking centuries. Ooh, holy shit! All right. Two so, <clears throat> what have the Dalish been up to this entire time? Just fucking off. Um, just fucking off. Yeah. Well, hundreds, so hundreds two, of years. They're just like, yeah. They're just like yeah, they're trying get... to preserve Elven culture. They don't really know. So about two it, exalted though. marches have, have, good, have been good. Yes. Right. But the other ones have but, been. And, but there's been a bit. total of six. But the other ones just shit the bed. And they're like, well, yes. fine. But boy. those two have been. Speaking really of exalted important. marches, 752 storm. Another exalted march is called on the Kunari, and it fucking fails. No. Most of Antiva falls to the Kunari. How would my character react to Kunari? I feel like he would be based with them. He'd be like, yeah, Seven, kind of cool. Uh, 755 uh, Storm, the final exalted march on the Kunari's call. So this is the third one to be called on the Kunari. Um, 760 Storm, that march is still going on. Kirkwall is liberated from the Kunari by Orlay, and it becomes Orlay territory, or Orlesian territory. 784 Storm, the exalted march on the Kunari ends with the Lamaran Accord, so it ends with a peace treaty signed by all but Tevinter. So we see everyone came together. Even the Kunari came and they were like, we're, there's a lot of losses on every side here. We're just going to sign the Lamaran Accord, which is basically like, just, we're going to avoid each other. Don't be an asshole. Yeah, it's basically like, we're going to avoid each other for right now. 
Yeah, uh, don't mean asshole. Um, and I should say the reason the Kunari is invading or always trying to invade is because they think that they're they think that everyone needs to follow the Kunari because it's the right way of living. Mm -hmm. Classic. That's like a lot of other. So by invading right by now. invading Thetis, they think that they're doing a good thing. Isn't the Kunari like the most Thetis? technologically advanced? No, that's the dwarves. Like by a long shot. So, so, so do the dwarves happen to have guns? I read um, somewhere that there the are dwarves that do have guns, uh, but they live in the abyss and we don't know a lot about them. I was going to the question. Also, guns, dwarves? like in the Dragon Age, like around this time, we know that Antiva and Ravain like develop flintlocks uh, and sort of muskets and shit. So, guns do exist, just not really good ones. I read that so Kunari not... <laughs> have really good medicine and stuff. So, so they have good like... medicine, they have um, something called Gatlock, which is basically gunpowder, but super powerful. So, not like an AR-15 something. No, there's like... no fucking AR-15s. Well, like in a Civil War musket. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, Question. You know, when I think they're putting like Does Sabina the bull like, follow the queen? Yes, he does. He's, um, he is what is called a Bin Hasrath, which is basically a spy. They're that spies. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> they're spies, they're enforcers, they're kind of this muscle, basically. That they basically, the Ben Hasrath, they're, like, in the Cune, your your job is your name. So, if I was a Stin, for example, a Stin is like, like a general, kind of. Like the Companion Stin? Like the Companion Stin. My ah! name is, like, if I was a Stin, my name is Stin. Hi, Stin. Uh, you already give each other nicknames, however, and that's why you call Iron Bull the Iron Bull. Oh. Um, Stin doesn't take a nickname. He follows the Cune through and through. And he's a pretty cool guy. He's one of my favorite companions from Origins, because you learn a lot about the Kuhn through him. Um, kind of basic. Yeah, kind of basic. Have you, have you read the Kuhn? The Kuhn? Uh, we don't actually the have, we don't have the full religious doctrine of the Kuhn. Yeah, you should get it. <laughs> you should. And we don't know, like, it's implied that they worship something, but we don't really know what that thing is. And also, a Kunari is just a follower of the Kuhn, so an elf can be a Kunari. They can be converted to the religion. It's just that mostly Kossip are Kunari. Um, I know you try. But you so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, seven eight four storm. The Lamar and the Cur Accord is signed. Wait, why is um, it called storm? Uh, because it was basically a time of turmoil and change. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're seven, almost there, boys. We're yeah. almost to the game. <laughs> seven ninety nine storm. With the end of the Cunari War and the birth of twins in the Orishan royal family, the hopeful divine. Re, uh, names the next age blessed. You never wish for good things in Thetis. Never wish for good things. It's always sunny in Thetis. It's never sunny in Thetis. No, it's always sunny. Age 5 blessed. Kirkwall gains its independence. <coughs> and it becomes one of the free marches again. Age 24 uh, blessed. Orle invades Ferelden again. Mm. 20 years later, Orle succeeds in taking Ferelden, but is resisted by small rebel bands led by the ex king. Megrim Theron's daughter, Moira Theron. Hmm. Um, she is considered a better ruler than her father, and she is called the Rebel Queen. Hmm. Her son is a man named Merrick Theron. 855 Blessed, Merrick. the Cunari retakes a Heron. 896 Blessed, Moira is assassinated by dissenters in her own rank, kind of like Andraste. Merrick escapes thanks to a, uh, a commoner named Loghain. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Loghain? Um... 899 Blessed, Divine Faustine II originally lined up the name Sun for the next age, but uh, she believed it would be a time of violence and change. Then, even though they were thought to be extinct, a fucking dragon was spotted out of nowhere in Antiva, and she named the next, uh, the next age Dragon, a time of the impossible becoming possible. The one dragon. Yeah. Uh, well, dragon. We learned that a, a witch of the wilds named... Um, uh, I forgot what her fucking name was, but she's one of Plymouth's daughter. Uh, she basically, she basically, like, when dragons were being hunted, she was basically like, mm, I'm just gonna raise my own dragons over here, and I'm gonna release them into the world when they're ready. Plymouth. <laughs> uh, it wasn't How many did she have? Technically. It was, oh, what the fuck was her name? Yvonne. Yvonne's her name. How many dragons did she have? Do you, meet, do you meet Yvonne? You don't meet her in the game, so she's in the comics. Oh. Yeah. That's not um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and she's an Antiguan Witch of the Wilds. So, 9-0 Dragon. Ferelden rebels, led by Merrick, defeat Orle and gain Ferelden's independence. Um, also, I want to comment real quick, the entire arc of Merrick and Loghain uh, winning independence for Ferelden back, 
It's chronicled in the two Dragon Age novels, The Stolen Throne and The Calling, and I really recommend reading them. They are probably the best novels. Actually, I like Masked Empire more. <laughs> Masked. Masked, Masked Empire is about... <laughs> Masked Empire is all about the game and Orle I like and Orle. Empress Selene. It's really cool, and I recommend... For you especially, I recommend The Masked Empire. I'm not going to read it. Okay. <laughs> I can't. I don't have access to it. I would if I could. Um, but anyway, yeah. The, the, the events of the Civil War, or the Rebellion of Thraldom, is uh, chron chronicled in the books The Calling and The Stone Throne. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, 925 Dragon. King Merrick is lost at sea, and he's presumed to be dead. <laughs> His son, Caelan, takes the Yo, and he's cool. we're finally into the Dragon Age Origins timeline. Yo. So, or Dragon Age Origins is the first video game to take place in Thetis. It's where all this cool, fun shit happens. You got her coming in. You got your villains over here. Um, and since we're this, uh, so this is the first time we're covering a game in the lecture. So I want to do something different uh, for when we do this because. The games obviously have a lot of cool companions in them, and a lot of cool villains, but their stories don't really relate too much to the stories of, like, to the stories of the games individually. So real quick, I just want to go over every companion, and then I'll go over the villains as well. So, um, no part next to Alistair. Uh, he drew it there, and this because Alistair's a total sweetheart. Um, oh, he's my favorite. So Dragon Age Origins chronicles the event of the Fifth Flight. The Fifth the Flight... Fucking. It is led by the archdemon Urthimio, the dragon of beauty. Urthimio is not the female one. Uh, Razakiel is the female. Oh. So yeah, Urthimio is the archdemon, the dragon of beauty, and he is ruling for the fifth flight. Um, the fifth flight also only lasts one year, making it by far the shortest flight ever. In fact, the fifth I bet flight. On six months. The fifth flight is so small that most people outside of Ferelden think that it was just a hoax to get the Grey Wardens in power again. Because it was contained in Ferelden entirely. Took so they did a good job about it. Yes. Um, so far it has been the weakest flight as well. Wow, we know it's the weakest flight because the Wardens didn't do a good job of keeping it contained. The Wardens got fucked up at Ostagar. So, um... It was Logan's fault. Yeah, so basically, so basically we know for a fact that Urthemio led the weakest flight yet. So, um, let's start over here with the companions. Alistair. Alistair is a Grey Warden uh, that you meet, and he's a cool guy. He's the, uh, so the game basically starts out with the Battle of Ostagar after the prologue, and that's where uh, Loghain, like, you're supposed to signal Loghain to send in his armies to help out, because you're teaming up with Caelan and the Grey Wardens. The Grey Wardens are led by this guy named, um, fucking, what's his name? Duncan? Duncan. Yeah. Duncan's like the Obi-Wan figure of the video game. <laughs> Um, anyway, so you're supposed to get to the tower to signal Loghain to come in and help you guys fight the Blight, but Loghain <laughs> retreats. He does not help you. K Kaelin dies, Duncan dies, most of the Grey Wardens die. The only Grey Wardens that really survive this are you and Alistair. So, Alistair's pretty cool. He was, he was part of the Chantry, he was being raised to become a, uh, Templar. to become a Templar, but then Duncan found him and was like, you know what, boy? You make a good Grey Warden. You know what, boy? <laughs> the reason for this is because Duncan knows the truth about Alistair. Because Duncan was a close friend of Merrick Theron. Alistair is a bastard son of Merrick. Merrick had, er, yeah, Merrick conceived Alistair with an elven mage named Fiona, who was once a Grey Warden, but she just stopped being a Grey Warden. Like, the fucking calling had no effect on her. All of a sudden, the dark spawn blood, it just had no effect on her anymore. So Duncan was like, well, you can't kind of be with us anymore, and you're also pregnant with the king's son, uh, which we thought couldn't happen. We thought wardens were all sterile. So fucking, I don't know what to do right now. You want to just go to the circle or something? And Fiona's like, sure. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Alistair is Fiona's son. Do we meet Fiona? Yes, we meet her in Inquisition. If you Whoa. saw the two yeah. Whoa! Um, and also, I in mean, Inquisition, it isn't, it's not revealed that she's Alistair's mother in Inquisition. Like, she says, um, she says like weird stuff about Alistair, like, oh, I heard, I've heard you met the king or whatever. Um, is he's he doing cool. all right? Is, is he, he cool? cool? Yeah, basically like that. So it's a little sus. Um, and then you, um, then you learn that uh, in the books, Holy in the books, shit. I'm in, eating pig. In the book, The Calling, that is when it, that is when it is discovered <laughs> that, uh, that is when it is discovered that um, he's, uh, 
or Fiona and Mary can see. Them. I just realized I hadn't checked the camera in a while. It's working now. I just wanted to scare you. <laughs> I know we're actually running. We're actually running low on the SD card. I think. We're almost done. So uh, I, can, I can pause it and check. Yeah, pause it and check. Okay, and we're back. So, um, Alistair, yeah, he's the bastard son of King Merrick, and he can advise us. He ain't no bastard when you go to Red. Um, Alistair, you can only romance him if you're a female word. Uh, he's one of the two uh, gender locked romances in um, Origins. The other oh. one is Morgan, who you can only romance if you're a dude. <laughs> <laughs> Me, dude. So Trolled. Um, I tried so hard. <laughs> so, yeah, Alistair, he's pretty cool. He's like an inverse of King Arthur. Like, when you first meet him, you expect him to be like a sort of like King Arthur type figure. But he's a sort of, um, uh, like, inverse version of that character stereotype. And it's really cool. And uh, it's the second character that Origins uh, sort of switches like that. Because Morgan is also based on an Arthurian legend of... Uh, Morgan Le Fay. No way! Um, but Morgan is also sort of a, a switch up of that whole role and that kind of character. Um, the next companion you get is Barkspawn. Barkspawn's a dog. You no, get to it's name dog. It. He's my favorite. Uh, you get to name it. He imprints on you, or you imprint on it. What Why did you, you name, name it? Barkspawn? Um, Barkspawn is basically the canon name. No, it's dog. Okay. Can Brutus. I who does? That way he never dies. Reason, I need my turtle. Like, Bark Spawn, it was a big meme in the community, and then Dark Spawn Chronicles came out, which is basically an alternate ending for Origins, where you play as the Dark Spawn in a... Uh, That's kind of cool. It's uh, You play as the Dark Spawn in the final siege of Dinarin, in a world where your warden died during the Jordan. Um, so yeah, uh, when you meet Alistair, and you finally fight Alistair, uh, in the final fight of um, Dark Spawn Chronicles, uh, the dog is named Bark Spawn, after... Um, after the after the community meeting, after barking so, and spawn. Um, so fun. basically, we know for sure that at least if the warden wasn't around, Alistair would have named it Bark Spawn. Um, Morgan. Nice. Morgan's the next character. She is a witch of the wild. She is the daughter of Plymouth. Uh, Plymouth is this old ratchety bitch from the Gokari Wilds, um, and she like Morgan is the one that saves you and Alistair from the Battle of Ostagar when Logan retreats. Um, and she's like, well, as a rec recompensation, uh, my daughter Morgan will help you uh, go out and get these treaties signed. You by will everyone. bang my daughter. And she doesn't say that. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> she implies so it. So she's he like, did. she's like, Morgan's gonna come out and she's going to help you get all these treaties signed for the great ones. Uh, so that she can help out with her play. And Morgan's like, Mom, I don't want to go. And she's like, I don't go, want to go. Bitch. Oh, shit. And then um, later on, you find uh, like a black grimoire in the Circle Tower. Spoiler. And you give this to Morgan. And she's like, Hey, it's kind of like the grimoire that my mom had. And she starts researching this. And eventually she's like, Well, I figured out how Plymouth lives so long. She takes over the bodies of her daughters and just continues living like that. And she's like, I don't fucking like that. You you should go down and kill Plymouth right fucking now. Did you? Yes. Um, you so killed her? The warden went down, killed Plymouth. She turned into a big fucking dragon. Okay. You kill Plymouth, you take Plymouth's grimoire, and you give this to Morgan. She's like, thank you very much. Also later on in the game, Morgan finally reveals the reason that Plymouth actually sent her on the mission. That is because Plymouth knows about the ritual to make a cold god baby. And she, Flemeth is like, I want that. I want that. <laughs> yes, please. Um, so Morgan, uh, she's like, well, Morgan, you're going to go fuck one of these dashing young lads at the end. Um, and my warden ended up romancing Morgan, so it actually worked out pretty well. So yeah, um, he fucked Morgan. They had an old god baby. Hmm. Leliana. Uh, Leliana hmm. is an ex-bard. Uh, <laughs> She is a uh, bards. Bards are like what you think they are. They tell tales and shit, and they're cool, uh, and they're from Orlay. But also, some bards are like spies and assassins, and Meliano is one of these bards. I and she bards. was mentored by a girl named Marjolaine. Marjolaine uh, ended up like there's a uh, there's like a Suicide Squad uh, DLC basically for Origins where you learn Meliano's backstory. It's called Meliano's Song. And she and her entire squad are betrayed by uh, Marjolaine, and um, they basically get fucked over. And Leliana's kind of the only survivor. So Actually, what? no, Sketch also survives. Sketch so is like what? We're like some sort of suicide squad? Yeah, basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, I get that reference because they're a suicide squad. 
I should watch the races. I want to watch, watch it too. I've heard it's pretty. Fun. I've heard it's good. Yeah. I've heard it's pretty fun. It has Shark King. I want to watch it. It has Weasel. It has the. It has the funny peace guy. Um. Anyways, uh, John R. Shadow was not very good. I did. So yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, but yeah, that's Morgan uh, in a nutshell, basically. And she's, um, like, she's, um, she knows a lot about magic and shit, but she's very naive to the rest of the world. And um, she sort of, like, learns how to emote, like, a fucking human being throughout the course of the game. Um, and that's her in the top left. Dude, I banged her within 30 seconds. Nice. Let's go! Um, oh, fucking, I'm, and on then I banged I'm, on, I'm on Liliana right now. I completely forgot. Um, Liliana, but yeah, she basically got the trade, but she survived, and she was saved by this uh, priestess called Mother Dorothea, and she was like, well, Liliana, uh, you should join the Chantry, and you should reform yourself. You uh, son of a bitch. Uh, priest, or Mother Dorothea would go on to become Divine Justinia V. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so Liliana's an important guy who would become the Divine. Yo, Liliana's uh, bisexual, and you could bang her with, like, seven other people. Yeah. You know, That's pretty cool. Fight, so. Stan! <gasps> Stan's cool. Oh. Stan is a Kunari who killed a bunch of farmers in Lothering, and he was locked up. I never understood and the backstory of it. Oh, yeah. Basically, he, he got into a big fucking rage, killed these farmers because he lost his sword, and like a Stan is nothing without the sword. What yeah. the fuck? Um, oh, it's like, so it's Stan, like a whole culture. You yeah, he's, your like, sword, he's you're fucking... like, I am fucking basically dead. There's no point in me being alive. So he just went into this big rage, ended up accidentally killing this farmer family me who whenever, saved him. Me so whenever like, sex is off <laughs> So like, he went into this big rage. This far, this family of farmers actually saved him, but he ended up killing them. And then he was like, he fucking looked around and looked at his hands like, oh my god, what have Cold. I done? And then he just turned himself into the Lothering guard. So you meet him, he's in a gibbet um, in Lothering, and you have to, uh, like, you can get the authorization of the local priest woman, um, who is also Liliana, you can meet her in the bar as well. Starting to beat that bitch's ass. <laughs> <laughs> you can get, like, and basically, <laughs> basically, Stin can be released as your ward, sort of. You're like, you're, you're taking him out on a fucking, uh, on, prison. On take him out on town. or something, whatever, yeah. And he's like, and you're like, well, I can, I can work with this big Kunari man, and Stin's like, uh, 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 I can okay. use a Kunari man for the blight. Um, anyway, uh, you eventually end up finding Stin's sword, and Stin's like, I could not thank you more. You are my friend now. You weren't before? That yeah. did. <laughs> yes. Uh, but, Stin's, but Stin's really cool. And Stin goes on to become the next Aeroshock. No, eventually. And the Aeroshock is the leader of the uh, Kunari military. Um, there are two leaders in the Kunari people. There's the Aeroshock and the... Um, the Aero... Era jock. <laughs> I don't know. It's like Era the uh, the male <laughs> the male one. The Era shocks the leader of the uh, army, and then the other one's the leader of the faith. In the uh, and she's good though. Uh, leader of faith mm -hmm. in our people. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, uh, Stin becomes the next Era shock eventually. <laughs> That's way down the line. Can you bang Stin? No, unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. uh, Morgan taunts Stin. She's like, uh, I bet you want some of this ass. And like at first, Stin's just like entire like no. We do not for humans. <laughs> the entire time. And then but then he like starts playing back and it's like, Oh, I suppose I suppose we could do that, but you probably need some armor to protect yourself and you probably need like a hot rod and just just keep me back because I might not feel anything otherwise. He's like, you know what? Nah <laughs> Um so yeah, spin's pretty base. When? I feel like I'm gonna fucking feel Jane after that one. <laughs> when is this old woman from the circle tower? She's kind of like, if you're a mage, she's kind of, and my warden was a mage, kind of like a sort of mentor-like figure. She's a spirit healer, and we learned that long ago she was on the precipice of death until a spirit of faith found her, and basically uh, sh she did a heroes never die on her, and Wynne has a spirit of faith living inside of her. Oh, really? It keeps her alive, yes. Huh. Um, and Wynne's like this super wise healer girl, and she has spirit powers. The spirit of faith is never explained very well, and it could also possibly be another inspiration for the maker or a maker like entity that I will discuss later. Because hmm. it comes back. Um, anyway, yeah, okay, so I should get on. The three like hard rules of magic in uh, Thetis are can't bring someone back to the dead once their spirit has left their body, can't teleport, can't travel in time. 
Why not teleport? All three of these rules have been broken. By who? But in the games. Okay. Uh, first of all, why are they? Who made these fucking rules? Well, those are just rules of the universe, of the oh, natural okay. universe. Yeah. That basically they were discovered long ago. So the rules just don't fucking exist anymore. A basic kind of it's weird. It's weird. It's right. like so principles you, can't you from principles the you should follow. Are you, yeah. Well, it's hard not to follow them, but or hard to follow yeah, them. Yeah, it's hard. Like here's like, the thing: they're supposed to be like scientific laws, basically. Like you can't break these three rules. They're scientific laws. If you jump up, you fall down. Um, you yeah, yeah. So you like, can't use like, it's like, a, like mustard gas on people. No, no, it's nothing. No, like, it's a like, scientific law is something that you literally like can't gravity. Oh, like, gravity. Okay. Like, I cannot just fucking start no clipping up there, because it's a lot of science. Imagine <laughs> 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 That's really funny. What? But if you try hard enough, you probably could. Uh, but yeah, here's the thing with magic. Like, So these three magical laws me. exist, but all three of them do get broken throughout the course of the games, uh, very niche ways. So, is it and when is the first case of someone who is basically dead, but got brought back to life? So teleport, who's, who's done necromancy... That? Or bring um, someone back to life. Bring someone fully back to life, teleportation, and time So, So do zombies just not exist? Or zombies exist. Okay. It's weird. Zombies are, like, I think they're corpses that are possessed by shades. And shades are basically, like, um, lesser just spirits. lesser lesser demons, basically. Wow. They're spirits who wanted to become demons, but weren't powerful enough to become actual full-fledged demons. More base. Okay, yeah. so who did fucking, okay, like, you were traveling in time. Like, who did that? We'll I'm kind of pissed that they can do that, but in D and D I can't do that. Well, <laughs> well so it's there's not there's not an official spell. Shell, I talked about Shell earlier. She's the dwarf that became a golem, and she's in this uh, town called Hanley. Uh Basically, she's been rotting there for centuries because the wizard that had her control rod died, and no one else knew where the fuck to get that or how to control it. So she became like the center of like the garden in Hanley. And the warden goes there, finds her control rod, saves the city from dark spawn, and basically resurrects Shale. Mm -hmm. And she's like, "Why? Well, thank you very much, um, but you're not going to control me. And the warden's like, I didn't even want to, so what are you going to do now? And, and she's like, well, I guess I'll just go with you, because i got nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you kind of troll her. Like, you basically you do a little bit of trolling. But Shale's pretty cool. Um, and you learn about, a lot about her. Ogryn's my fucking man. So Ogryn is married to Paragon Bronca. Oh, uh, Bronca. Uh, although, uh, before the events, years before the events of Dragon Age Origins, Bronca basically took her entire tie and disappeared in the deep roots to look for Caradon. So, now Ogryn's just a drunk that hangs out in the Orzammar bars. And you can recruit him when you go to Orzammar and you go to find Bronca, because that's part of the quest, the paradigm of the time. So, you go, you, you, that's where you recruit Ogryn. He's funny, he's like the drunker dwarf character. I, where, me, why? I like myself some Ogryn. Um, you learn throughout the course of the game that he also has another lover, and he's like, you know what, maybe I should just settle down with this girl. He's and you, cheating and, on Well, I mean, his wife was missing for years at this fucking point. So. No. Um, so, Ogryn's like, maybe I should just settle down with this girl. The warden's like, yeah, maybe you should, Ogryn, maybe you should. And then his um, wife shows up, and he's like, well, <laughs> fuck. Well, we get to his wife, though. Oh, okay. Zevrin is an Antivan crow. He's an elf that tries to assassinate you. And you can either choose to kill him, which I did on my first playthrough. I was like, fuck you. I'm, I don't want to do this. I'm just killing this goddamn assassin. He tried no to companion run? No companion run. Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, the second playthrough, which is the Eclipse Cannon, um, I recruited Zevrin, and he's this cool guy. He's from Antiva. And you learn, like, he would be dead to the crows anyway because he failed to assassinate you. So he's just sort of your buddy. And if you get a high enough approval rating with him, near the end of the game, like, an Antivan crow pops up and he's like, Zevran, help me kill this warden, and then we'll let you back in. If your approval rating with him is low, he'll attack you. If it's high, though, he'll be like, nah, warden's my homie, and we fight him back. Homie. Um, so and Zevran, then you bang Lily on the Zevran is the other bisexual character in Origins. Yeah, and then you bang Lily on the Yeah. Those are all the companions for Origins. Let's go over here to the villains. Um, mm -hmm. Also, Origins has a bunch of stupid fucking one-note DLC companions that I'm not going to talk about. I'm so only going to talk not about... fucking matter at all. Basically. I'm only going to talk about two of them because they're cool and they're in the Awakening DLC. So. Loghain. Loghain Mactir, or Tan Loghain, is the big bad villain of Origins, essentially. He betrays Kalanhat at Ostagar. That bitch. He, uh, he basically incites civil war in Ferelden, and at the Lands Meet, which is the big political gathering of all the Arls and shit, you've got to bring him down. However, you have an option to actually recruit Loghain into a Grey Warden. 
which is what I did. Um, so like instead of force, instead of executing him, I'm like maybe Logan, maybe is he can that, do some good. Is that a good ending? Kind of, yeah. Because um, well, first of all, um, I think if you execute him, or like if you keep him alive and Alistair isn't hardened, then um, mm. what? Then uh, then Alistair won't agree to be king or whatever. Doesn't have the um, possibility of like dying to like a jade warden shit too. Um, yeah, that's that's the whole thing. It's like if you do the joining, like you might fucking die again, but it's a chance to do some good. It's for a life. chance for he your. He ends up surviving the joining. Yeah, for you. Yeah, rock some yeah. yeah, he ends up surviving the joining, and um, and basically he just does his best to fight to help you fight against the black. He's like, yeah, I lost. I realized, you know, he was like, he was trying to do the best for for Elton because he genuinely thought like, I should be the king. He was like, motherfucker, Callan or Kaylin has done nothing for us. He's too much like his father. Loghain and Merrick were friends, but they drifted apart for the years because Merrick was too willy-nilly about his rulership. And Loghain was like, we need strong fucking leadership against this blight. So you can really, especially if you read the books, you can get to Loghain's head about what he's thinking. And he's a cool, complex character. Probably the best, at least the best human villain the games have ever had. Arthemiel is the dragon of beauty. He is the archdemon of the fifth blight. Uh, the mother and the architect we will get to later. So, let's get on to the events of Dragon Age Origins. Um, I'm going to just describe the events that I did in my personal playthrough because there are so many different ways this game can turn out. I'd be here, the entire, this half of the lecture would just be about Origins if I described everything that could happen. So, with that, oh shit. Oh, buddy. Oh, that was bad. What? Voice crack. Voice fucking crack. What? So, with that being said, we open up in the Circle Tower on the hailing of a mage, an elven mage named Aliandor Surana. Aliandor Surana, he's an elf mage. Um, he was inducted in the Circle at a young age. Um, noted, he's like around maybe like early 20s, late 20s at the most, whenever he goes through his harrowing. He was described to be like a little wiser, be like sort of beyond his years. So the Templars were like, fucking, we shouldn't actually make this guy a mage. Uh, but then the first enchanter early was like, we'll make this guy a mage. <laughs> Talk about your Grey Warden? Yeah, yeah. Um, and he goes to the heroine and becomes a full mage. Um, also, a Templar character that I'm going to mention right now, because he's very important later, is Colin. <gasps> Colin is the Templar. Oh, I fucked him. Colin is the Templar who was tasked with killing you if you failed your hero. And the harrowing is an event, by the way, where you go into the Fade and you fight a demon. Um, if you fail, however, the demon possesses you and the Templar's got to be ready to kill you. And the harrowing's the only way to become a full-fledged mage by Templar rules. Because Templars are like, well, if you can't handle a fucking demon, um, we're going to kill you. <laughs> fucking Templars. It's pretty fair. It's pretty fair. Um, I mean, I guess. I mean, if you can get possessed by a demon in your sleep because you're a mage. Oh, also fucking, okay, some other events of the Dragon Age I forgot. In 9.5, Kalsharok is rediscovered, that old Dorvan guy I talked about fucking years ago over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In 9.20 to 9.25, Empress Selene is crowned, um, mm -hmm. and Merrick is lost to sea. Yeah. Okay, so those are just two events in the year that should Empress Selene is the Empress of Olay, um, and her life is chronicled in the book The Mask and Fire. Fuck her, boy. So, that's Aliandra Serrana. Um, his friend Jowan, after his hearing, his friend Jowan came and he's like, Bro, I think they're gonna make me tranquil. I don't wanna be tranquil. Cause I kinda been fucking this chantry bitch on the side, kinda a little bit. Uh, man, I really need you to help me destroy my phylacteries so I can get out of here. Phylacteries are a little blood vial that is used to track down mages. And Aliando's like, This is fucking stupid, Jowan. Nothing, if you just act alright, nothing bad's gonna happen. So he went to the first Enchanter Irving, and he's like, man, uh, I think John's going to do something stupid. I really need your help with this. First Enchanter Irving's like, oh, mm, I see, I see. Just, mm, just you like Wait, so you snitched? Yes. Same. <laughs> you little snitching <laughs> pussy. Fucking, fucking Jowan's a dumbass. <laughs> I love Jowan. Blind, blind so run. I was, dude, I just had such bad vibes from the very beginning. I was like, nah, I'm snitching on this boy. Man, you guys <laughs> suck. You guys are snitching. Um, yes, sir. So yeah. Uh, anyway, first Enchanter Irving's just like, go along with it, I'm gonna warn the Templars, we don't want to alert Jowan, essentially. So Jowan, you go through, you destroy his phylactery, um, you walk out, and the Templars are there, and first Enchanter Irving's oh, like, just, just come along, and Jowan's like, no, they're gonna make me tranquil, and he uses fucking blood magic, and Aliando's like, 
Dude, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Down? <laughs> he uses blood magic to stun everyone there and then runs off uh, into, into, the the, into the wilderness. Um, and and uh, Knight Commander Gregor, um, who is uh, suspected to have also been a love interest of Wynn back in the day, uh, Templar and the Mage, pretty cool shit. Mm -hmm. um, he also probably conceived Wynn's child, who we meet in the book Asunder. Mm -hmm. um, his name is Reese, if I recall correctly. No. Uh, fuck. Okay. Um, so yeah, don't say that. that. First That's Enchanter cool. Irving's like, hey, it's cool. I told Aliandor to do this, to go along with it. And Knight Commander Gregor's like, well, that's fucking stupid. Why would you do that? And then the Grey Warden Duncan shows up. And Duncan's like, hey, I can solve this problem with you. I'll make this strapping young lad into a Grey Warden. And everyone's happy about that. <laughs> um, I was like, yo, Joan. I'm gonna not support you. But then they were like, uh, the first chapter is like, we can kill his girlfriend. Yeah. I think that's a good play. We killed the girlfriend. Like, we frame it. John was fault. Girlfriend gets curled. John maybe get killed. We'll try to protect him. I'm like, bro, wait. Lily hasn't done a thing. <laughs> yeah. <that's, that's laughs> she did, she did kind of like break some rules, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, but that wasn't enough because she did end up, like, something happened to her. I can't remember. She was in love with a blood mage. I don't want to hear blood mage. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't know. Blood, 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 blood mage. Bad, blood mage. Blood mage. I mean, yeah. Okay, okay so Duncan takes Aliander to Ostigo, and he's like, "We're gonna make him the Grey Warden, but first we need you to do some patrols." Aliandor, he helps heal this dog, this uh, Mabari named Bartsborn <laughs> from the Blight. Um, I actually named, I think I named my dog Charles in this playthrough. Why Charles? Um, I Should think I it was either a reference to Moist Critical. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's actually <laughs> hilarious. That's, that's funny. How old were you? a reference to Charlie as in the Charlie that we know. <laughs> oh, how, how old were you? Well, this most recent playthrough? Huh. It was like earlier this year. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, that does not really explain it. Um, well, I, was, I was 18. <laughs> well, why would age matter? Rather, rather, I, I was like, I was like, I wonder what his reference is. Like, I was trying to get into his brain, but no, Charlie that we know or Moist Critical makes some. Yep. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing else. There's so, really nothing else. Charlie. Ostagar. <laughs> Ost uh, so, uh, Duncan takes you to Ostagar. You go out into a uh, training patrol with two other wardens and I think Alistair as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trust me. I have. I, I have. Yeah. Like, okay. Basically, my Dragon Age Origins <laughs> playthroughs were set into like they were broken up into two separate eras, so I don't remember like the first half of this essentially, but I, I can remember it. I played the first half of Dragon Age Origins seven times, only because I keep forgetting to save my game. Anyway, <laughs> you meet Morrigan in the woods. Aliandor is the only one who feels comfortable talking to Morgan because he knows all about magic. I think she tells you to fuck off or something, but she like remains a little cool with you. What happens when Morgan talks to you? Um, all right, so she's so like, you can either tell her to fuck off and she'll be like, you fuck off, or you can be like, you're chill and she'll be like, you're chill. Okay, fuck so these guys though. Yeah, that's basically. Yeah, because everyone basically, else is like, she's a woman. She's a witch in the woods. That's basically what happens. We should vote like, her now. It's like, yeah, let's be chill. And Alistair's like, what? Okay. Yep. <laughs> kind of so, hot though. Yeah. Yeah. Alistair was kind of into it, and then she started talking, and he was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wham, Dude, man. fucking, uh, on a side note, Claudia Black, who's the voice actress for Morgan, one of the best voice actresses <gasps> oh, ever. Claudia like, she's Black. She's really fucking good. And also, uh, this is only Claudia gonna... Dark. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Dude, I'm done. I'm rolling up. Uh, so this is only gonna be fun for me, but Flemeth, uh, Flemeth is voiced by, um, Oh, I, forget, I forget her name, but she <laughs> she's voiced by the same person who played Captain Janeway on Star Trek Voyager. Well, Shut up! Kind of like... right. I was interested until now. <laughs> None of us ever watched anyway, Star she Trek has, Voyager. She has a really cool, like, authoritative uh, female voice that I really like, and I think it's one of her. Yeah. Um, so anyway, Ostagar. You and Alistair. When the Battle of Ast Ostagar actually happens, because, like, Grey Warns are like, there's another blight coming on. And it's coming into Ostagar. And Ostagar's like this fortress to the south near the Kakari Wilds. And Duncan's like, oh, man, I'm gonna be down there with Kaylin. And we're gonna be like, bah, 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 fighting those ducks, my man. I don't know why I decided to make Duncan a total fucking stoner. <laughs> he is, though. He had a cool ponytail. <laughs> and, uh, and we want you to go up and light the towers so that Logan knows when to come in. So the Battle of Ostagar starts, but the fifth flight begins. Um, you get up, like I said earlier, you get up to the tower, you light it up, Loghain retreats, he says, fuck you guys, I'm gonna go and be king, and Kaelin dies. I don't know, 
understand why they were like low gain weight in the ranks, weight in the back until yeah, the signal. I also don't understand that. Like that's one of the things where I'm like, well, why didn't why didn't they just have low gain there from the start? I think he was going to flank the dark spot as the goal. That's kind of a big break for him. Yeah. yeah. Right. There. Yeah. He was going to like come from the side or flank him. I think that's what they were going for. Anyway, Logan retreats, leaving everyone off the other right cross. Morgan save Alistair and Ellie Andor, oh. and they go on. No, it was Plymouth, idiot. Plymouth saved them as oh. a giant eagle. No, Plymouth saves the protagonist in the next game. No. No, in his power during the fight. Drew, I would obviously know. Yeah. And I'm telling you, you would. <laughs> okay. Trust me, I played the game seven times. Trust so, me, I played the game. But only the beginning. I played the game. Uh, so after that, the three uh, plus Bark spawn make their way up to Lothering. Uh, where they're like, the Lothering's the nearest city to Oscar. They warn all the refugees, hey, the blight's coming. They help out people around the town. They recruit Leliana, they recruit Stin. Uh, they get these this merchant in Bodan Fedek and his son Sandal, who's a weird dwarf that can do enchantments for some fucking reason, even though dwarves shouldn't be able to do it. No, they do it. Um, even in the TTRPG, you're allowed to do it yeah. as a dwarf. Oh, okay. All right. Only but, yeah, Sandal has a weird connection to the Fade, although also not a connection. To, it's weird. Only train pools um, and dwarves. Sandal, Sandal's probably the maker. Um, Sandal! <laughs> that would be yes. fucking That'd be hilarious. <laughs> Drew, please. Make uh, him be a fucking possessed by a spirit. <laughs> um, so, you get to Lothering and recruit them. Uh, shortly after, Lothering is overran. Um, overran by Darkspawn. And it gets kind of weird there, because Act 1 of Dragon Age 2 sort of takes place at the same time, or part of it takes place at the same time as Dragon Age Origins. So, during the attack on Lothering, the Hawk family, I'm just going to touch on this real quickly, uh, the Hawk family, they are refugees from Lothering, and they're, they're are apostates. Like, it's a very magic-stable, uh, like, the magic runs in the Hawk bloodline. And Malcolm Hawk was the father, and he, um, he provided the Marion Hawk, who was the eldest of the Hawk children, and then also twins Carver and Bethany Hawk. Marion and Bethany are both apostates. Um, hmm. So, yeah. Um, anyway, they're like fleeing Lothering. Uh, Bethany gets killed by a fucking ogre. Troll. Um, and Carver and Hawk, or Carver and Marion, have a bit of an antagonistic relationship, so it leaves some tension in the family. They also meet up with this guy named um, Sir. Oh, I forget what his fucking name is, but he's a Templar, and his wife, Aveline, who they were at Ostagar, and they actually retreated up to Lothering. Um, anyway, her husband di is dying to the blight, um, and Marion steps in, and she's like, we gotta give him a peaceful death. Uh, so she kills the husband, and Aveline basically joins up with the Hawk family because she's got nowhere left to run. And they're basically surrounded by Darkspawn until a big fucking dragon comes down, kills all the Darkspawn, and then transforms into a woman. That woman is Plymouth. Yo! Um, <laughs> Plymouth looks like a badass, sexy gilf in Dragon Age 2. Really? As, they don't as, keep her as an old woman? Well, she's, I mean, she's still an old woman. Oh. You, look up her Dragon Age 2 design. Okay, okay. okay. That's too hot. Okay. Very. <laughs> Like, yeah. one to ten. Let me show... Uh, hang on, I'll look up the Dragon Age 1 for yeah. Hayden's reference. Yeah, look up the Dragon Age 1 design. Um, anyway, Plymouth is like, well, I can get you guys to Kirkwall, but you have to do something for me. <laughs> You've already looked it up before. Jonas has already looked it up before, by the way. And it's just... Fuck no! He's a little haughty, isn't he? Never in my life. I'm that's assuming that's the right one, right? And let me see if I can find it. Never a in my lifetime when I ever fucking yeah, this, what I just saw. This is Plymouth from Dragon Age 2 in this position. She's, she's, she's like a mommy dog. Right, here, here. Here. You know? Dragon Age Origins? Side by side. Dragon Age 1? Dragon Age 2. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So, um... Damn, I'm gonna save this for later. Dragon Age, <laughs> Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah, so it's like, um, I can get you guys to the northern docks where you guys can go to Kirkwall to live out the rest of your life, but you have to do something for me. You have to take this amulet, you have to take it to Sundermount, which is a mountain that overlooks Kirkwall, and you have to break it at a shrine on Sundermount, because it might save my life the way I just saved your lives. Oh, shit. Um, and and Marion Hawk is like, okay, we'll make this deal. Man, I got a life debt. Marion Hawk is the protagonist of Dragon Age 2. Okay, so that's your Hawk. Yes. Um, most people choose Garrett Hawk, who's just the male version. Um, I like the female voice actress better, and also she's hot, so... <laughs> uh, I bet you're gonna be Finn Shepard! <laughs> I am Finn Shepard. You idiot! Started. She's that's hot it. and everything. I break your fucking 
there's no real reason to be Bale Shep. I guess. His I voice actor I, also like really sucks hammer. in the first game. Yeah, but he's cool though. I like Bale <laughs> Shepard. Um, anyways, that's what happens at Lodling. They get to Redcliffe. The squad. The squad fam gets to Redcliffe. And this is where Alistair confides, he confides in Aliandor that uh, he is a descendant of the Theron bloodline. Um, and Aliandor's like, cool, that's something else we gotta worry about. <laughs> they get there, they realize that for fucking days, undead have just been coming out of the castle and attacking the village of Redcliffe. So they help fortify the peasants, they help fight Redcliffe. back against the undead. And eventually the squad fam goes into Redcliffe Castle, where they realize that um, Connor, who is the son of the Arl, or the son of the Ban, maybe. No. Ban Tegan. Is he the son of Ban Tegan or the son of Arl Eamon? Uh, Arl Eamon. Okay. So, Connor's yeah. the son of Arl Eamon, and he's possessed by a desire demon. Um, the reason he's possessed by a desire demon, Arl Eamon is also poisoned, and his son is possessed. He was poisoned possessed. by Jawan. Yes, he's also possessed by a son. Connor possessed by desire demon. Yeah, Arl Eamon is poisoned. That I sound like I'm fucking spitting bars. <laughs> 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 anyway, Jowan was the one that did all this. You fucking Aliandor meets <laughs> Jowan in the jail cells. He's like, fucking come on, man. Why are you I I love that scene. You walk up, Jowan's there, and everybody's like, why? <laughs> How'd anyway, you get here? Aliandor uh, is like, why are you doing? to yourself, man. And John was like, well, this very nice man named Logan gave me candy and he told me that if I went to Redcliffe and fucked it up, he'd give me a good life. Did you hell, uh, did you find his, uh, partner in crime in, uh, Redcliffe? Yeah. In the tavern? Did you make him fight? Yes. That would be really funny. He dies. It's really funny if you make him fight. <laughs> I, I didn't make him. Did you make him? Fight no, I right? fucking intend. Yeah, no, no. Whenever I found out anyway. who he was, I was like, I mean, you, you're fight. You're so fighting Jowen, now. And Sten's like, good. Everyone should fight. So Jowen, <laughs> um, yeah. So Jowen was basically locked up in Red Cliff, and they realize, um, basically realize that uh, in order to free Connor from the Desire Demon, they're either gonna need Jowen. I fucking hate it. I hate the thing with Jowl. It reminds me of Jowl. It's so stupid. It reminds or, me of a dog Jowl. Or they can get the Circle of Magi to do it instead. Um, and okay. Aliandra's like, well, we're going straight to fucking Person Chanter Irvin, because he's a man I actually trust. Bro, I sacrificed the mom, because I was like, so that, yeah. that takes not, too long to get to the Magi. I did uh, not sacrifice the soul. Dude, Alistair was pissed. Yeah, he was pissed. He was like, what the fuck? I'm like, you're your mother's name. He was like, oh, okay. approval. <laughs> Dude. Dude, it was really funny whenever I did it, because that's whenever I was doing the fuck Alistair run, right? I was fucking him. And he was like, dude, what the fuck? You killed the mom. I'm like, here's your mom's amulet. And he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> and then I fucked him. So <laughs> after his mom fucking died, Alistair's died also a virgin. Death. His mom did die Fun death. Fun fact about Alistair, he's a virgin. Yeah. Yo! <sighs> I took it. I took it. And then I married him. Actually, I couldn't. I was a mage. Um, you can become so a consular good. or a consular? Is that what the a, a king hoe? Uh, uh, you become the king, king's hoe. Yeah, it's called a consular. Yeah, consular. So anyway, um, Aliandor and the crew go that. to the circle. They realize that the circle's been overtaken by blood mages and abominations. And abominations is what happen when a blood mage can't control a demon that they're made to deal with, and it becomes the end of the Um. And there's a sloth demon at the heart of all this called Torpor, uh, who basically caused all this to happen. Uh, you meet up with Knight Commander Gregor, and he's like, "Dude, I'm about to, I'm about to do it. I'm about to do it." He's like, "Dude, dude, give me one fucking reason. I'm about, I'm about to fuck you. I'm about to fuck you up, man." I walked in, and I'm like, "Oh, yo, Knight Commander Gregor, we left on some salty terms. What do you gotta say to me?" He's like, "I'm about to kill every single fucking person in that room." And I'm like, "Shit!" He's like, "I'm going to open those doors. My men are gonna open fire and kill everything." And literally, I'm like, "Yo, yo, yo, chill your row. I'm gonna go in there. I'll kill everything that is evil." And Knight Commander Gregor was like, "All right, but as soon as I get." Words. As soon as I, you got ten fucking minutes yeah, before like, I bust you, in there. He's like, the he only nine minutes to the nine, nine minutes to the eight. Yeah, nine I walk in there, right? The first thing I see is a bunch of children and fucking and win. win. You see a bunch of children and women, they're like, oh, please can help me. And then imagine, they're like, imagine if Gregor took charge here. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, ba da da. Uh, Skywalker. <laughs> this, fucking, this fucking busting through. And being fucking, uh. Master Gregor, <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> Uh, the Templars are attacking! <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking love Night Commander Dude, Colin was pissed. 
Anyway, you go in there with Wynn, you kill all the demons, you kill Torpor, there's this really fucking stupid part where you go to the Faith, and it's the worst part of the video game. You skip the colon scene where you walk up and you see no, colon that's, and it's No, that's, uh, oh, is it before after? colon. Faith's oh, before you're colon. right. Yeah. So you go to the fucking Faith, because Torpor puts you there, you gotta kill him in the Faith. It's the worst part of the game. Why is it so bad? <laughs> you haven't played it. I, fact, I, can't, I, hated fucking, it. I can't describe to you how bad the fate is in Origins. It, it unless is, not the funny. only yeah, reason yeah. why I enjoyed it was because I got skill buffs. <laughs> the only, the only parts much. I enjoyed were like the companion cutscenes, where you go to That's save it. your companions and you see what their like, nightmares are. I like. had Morgan and Stan and Wynn. I, had, I walk in there I, and I believe like, I, had, I had Morgan, Wynn, and Alistair. Morgan and Alistair were always a part of my party. What was Alistair's nightmare? Um, fucking what was it? I didn't have I know, Flemeth, or I mean, Morgan didn't believe hers, because, like, uh, it was with Flemeth, and she was like, you're not the real Flemeth. Yeah, because Flemeth Try was, harder, and then she, Flemeth no, no, no. slaps her, and she's like, you're doing better. <laughs> yeah, I love how Mor the only way Morgan could tell that it was fake was that Flemeth was nice to her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, this isn't right. And then if you go see Stan, Stan's like, I know this isn't real. And it's like, how? And she's like, I know. I just, I, I have an understanding above your small, Stan. tiny knowledge. Stan is the <laughs> I only know because you are not as smart as me. I am better in every way, he's shape, like, I and or form. He's like, I cannot fathom to describe that how That is what my character's going to be like, by the way. I hope you guys are ready for it. <laughs> my character's going to be I get anything, I get anything right. So, it's because we're um, all stupid. You bust, you go to Colin, and Colin's like, man, you gotta kill all the fucking mages in there. And, and Aliando's like, no, we're just going to kill the bad ones, Colin. And Colin's like, all right, fuck <laughs> you. Yeah, I love how Colin's just like, kill him. There's a fucking, um, there's a dialogue trap here, which I really don't like. Because if you question Colin, like, um, I think it's like if you say something like, oh, why should we kill those, or give me a reason to kill those Templars, uh, that the game basically locks you into killing the Templars. There's, it's like, it's a very, like, weirdly worded dialogue trap where Wynn betrays you, um, as well. It's, it's fucking, it's kind of stupid. Hmm. Um. Do you get a, a new companion if you... No. If no? I mean, you just kill one. Oh, that sucks. No, I mean, I'd rather have a new companion than fucking have the. It'd be cool if you could have like four as a companion. No. Um. Anyway, uh, it's probably better to work out like that because since Colin can't die in Origins, he comes back in the later games. And oh no 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 wait hang on no Colin didn't want to kill the Templars he wanted to kill all the mages. Yeah. Yeah that's right. Yeah, oh but, you said kill the. Anyway Templars. you go in there you free first Enchanter Irving and Irving's like yeah uh, we'll sign those treaties and also we'll go help you out in Red Cliff. You go there, Aliander goes into Connor's mind in the Fade, kills the Desire, or I think he just banishes her. He doesn't kill her necessarily. Oh, uh, did you bang her? I did not bang her. What did you do? I really Actually, thought no, about he it. Did, he did kill her. He you did, did, you did kill her. Uh, you I, to, if you want her to be gone for good, you have to kill her, I think. I went in there, right? I had uh, my uh, talking skills all the way max. So I went in there, I was like, you fucking bitch, get out of here. She's like, I can make a sweet deal. I was like, no, fuck you, get out. I'll kick your ass. And she's like, okay. I guess I'll leave, and I'm like, no, but I like that deal. You're gonna give me the deal, and then you're gonna oh, yeah. leave. <laughs> because if your cutting is high enough, you can just talk her out of it. I just intimidated the bitch, and I got, I fucked her, and then she left for good. Yeah, I, I, like, I intimidated her into leaving for good. Oh, I know. Okay. Never mind. I learned how to be a blood mage. Oh. <laughs> I fucked her, and then reloaded the save. Anyway, <laughs> um, oh man, uh, it was worth it. I got a chief, and I think. <laughs> And if I didn't, I got a person. Is there a cheap way to fuck like, everybody in the game? Um, Probably not. No, there's not. That's so lame. In order to cure Arl Eamon of his disease, you have to find the Urn of Sacred Ashes. Oh, I um, haven't completed that. You go there, you go to Haven, and there's a cult there that's worshipping a dragon of the new Andraste. You oh. kill them, you kill the dragon, you meet this guy named Brother Genitivi who's very interested in the ashes. Did you say meet him? Meet him. Oh, I thought you said eat him. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. it's like a fucking dirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't guy. I thought that Brother was cool. Brother TV, Brother Jin TV also writes a lot of codex entries. He's very cool. Um, anyway, you meet him, you find the Urn of Sacred Ashes. Aliandor chose to keep it as a historical site for people to visit. And also, he took some of the ashes to cure Arleman. Arleman's like, cool, we can start gathering an army to fight against Logan. Cool. Um, next order of business. Go to Orzammar to fuck and get the dwarves sorted out. Um, so they go up there to Orzammar. On the way, they drop by Hanleith, get Shale. That's cool. Yeah, um, yeah. They go to Orzammar, and the main conflict in Orzammar is who the next king is going to be. Is it going to be the king's son, King uh, Belen, uh, or is it going to be the king's advisor, a man named Lord Haramont? Or Haramont. Haramont was the only person that was in the room when the last king died. 
Um, it's very contentious on what he said, but basically Harrowmont spins it like, the king wanted me to be king. And Harrowmont, there is no reason to not believe this, by the way, because Harrowmont is an upstanding guy. He's, as a person, Harrowmont is really good and very genuine. Um, and King Velen is kind of a backstabber, and he does anything he can to get power. Here's the thing. Velen's policies are, we're going to open up Orzammar, we're going to get jobs for the castless, we're going to open up trade, and we're going to start being part of the world again. Harrowmont's policies are, we're going to remain closed off from the world, uh, Orzammar for the dwarves, we're going to build a wall and make for all the people. <laughs> They're kind of both Donald Trump. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyway, so... Aleander starts out helping Harrowmont because Harrowmont's just a really cool, upstanding guy. Then he realizes in his big brain, he's like, the better choice for Orzammar is Velen, though. And he spends some time thinking about this, and he's like, shit. And then he reloads his hatred. Um, no, he doesn't reload his hatred. Because you can, you can switch halfway through. No, it's just yeah. funny to think that you're like, ah, no, reload save. <laughs> That's where the time travel comes from? <laughs> That's the time travel. It's, like, under, it's like fucking Undertale. <laughs> um, you did anyway. not just relate Dragon Age to Undertale. <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyway, he's not wrong. Can you do an Aleandor? Undertale lecture? Yes. Did you fuck mm -hmm. fans? Aleandor, I did. Aleandor starts... Well, I you. Ale Aleandor starts fucking being like... Uh, yep, yeah, we're supporting King Belen now. Um, huh. But in order to get secure Belen's uh, kingship, you need a, a Paragon to endorse him. So you get Ogryn, and you're like, let's go and find fucking Bronca. You find Bronca through the Deep Rose with the help of the Leech of the Dead. And Bronca, I think Bronca's a golem by this point. She's turned herself into a golem. She and turned Caridin, herself into a pickle? Caridin is I still, can't believe this. Caridin is still alive in his golem form. And you have to choose now. Caridin's like, this was a fucking mistake. Making golems was a mistake. Um, uh, we should just destroy the Anvil of the Void. And Bronca's like, no, we should use it to make more golems. Um, and help out in the blight. Um, and if you side with Bronca, Shale turns on you. Bro. Um, and Shale will try to kill you. Um, but yeah, so basically, uh, Aleandor sided with Caradin, who's like, this is a power that no one deserves. Um, Caradin defeats Bronca, and Argon's like, well, shit, man, whatever. Bronca had a fucking lesbian lover anyway, what I didn't know about, so that's cool. <laughs> oh, wait, <laughs> hang on. So you wanted golems, or you were like, no more golems? Um, no more golems. He went for he the good. Yeah. He went for so the Karen good. So Caradin, Caradin was That's like, "Here, I'll forge a crown for King Belen. Then I'm going to destroy the anvil of the, of the void, and then he jumps into a river of lava and kills himself." Fucking oh, why? Kind of fog. Kind of He could have went and fought the dark fawn. No, he didn't want it. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he <laughs> wasn't feeling it. Yeah. He was like, oh, "I'm a golem." Man. What Go the hell, golem man? bad. It's Belen good. becomes the next king. He pledges Orzammar's armies to the wardens. Uh, apparently I forgot. Nature of the Beast. You go to a Dalish clan. Dalish clan has a werewolf oh, plague. I've done this one. Uh, Keeper Zathrian's like, you need to go to the fucking temple in the forest to sort out the werewolf plague. Aleander goes there, speaks to this uh, chick called the Lady of the Forest, and she's like, actually, Zathrian started this fucking curse centuries ago. When Yo, the Lady of the Forest is high. Zathrian started this curse years ago when Lady fucking of... humans oh, raped origins. his daughter and killed his son. Um, and he's the one that started this curse, and as long as the curse persists, the werewolf curse, as long as it persists, uh, Zathrian is also alive. So that's how he's 200 years old. He's also part wolf. Of the forest or of the forest? Forest. forest. Uh, so that's and how he's can, 200 right. years old. Anyway, you bring Zathrian there, and Zathrian's like, you know, like, Aleander convinces him, like, Zathrian, come on, man, don't it be, is, don't, be a, don't be a bitch, <laughs> alright? Um, so Zathrian kills himself to release the werewolves of the curse. In the Dallas, you're also free of the curse. <laughs> So yeah, uh, basically the Dalish fight for the Grey Worms. Wait, okay, so did you do the one where, like, the uh, Keeper and the Lady of the uh, Forest was like, all right, you know what, this, yeah. we gotta grow they up. they become chill with each other. Okay, okay. And Zathrian ends up sacrificing himself. So, the lands meet, the best part of the game. This is where Aro Eamon calls all the fucking lords and ladies together, and he's like, we're gonna figure out once and for all whether Loghain should be ruling or not. Also... Uh, Loghain's daughter, Queen Honora, has been ruling because she was married to Caelan. Um, so she's been ruling in his stead, but Loghain has been really manipulating shit behind the scenes. In fact, um, uh, Honora is basically under house arrest at Arl Howe's estate. Arl Howe is an evil guy that sides with uh, Loghain. Uh, basically, how uh, political structure works in Ferelden is you got the bands, which own like farmland, you got the Arls, which rule over multiple bands, and then you got the two Terrans which, like, dictate shit in the fucking 
north and south of Ferelden. Then you've got the King of Denerim, which rules over the land. It's kind of like Fiefdom. England. So, so bong? Um, you go there, the bong. Aliandor. The bong. Which is in the bong. Okay. Aliandor. It's like Russian dolls. Aliandor yeah, 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 yeah. goes there, and he's like, well, uh, he starts helping out all the nobles and getting them on his side. Um, eventually, he frees Queen Anora from house arrest, but in order for her to escape, she has to betray Aliandor and Alistair. So they're taken prisoner by Arl Howe, and uh, Morgan and Ogren are left with the task to bust them out. So, <laughs> the fucking unlikely duo, they go Wait, and, hang uh, on, Morgan and who? Ogren. <laughs> oh, I yeah. Love, I love pairing those two up to go do this rescue mission. Anyway, they go and they do this, um, they bust them out, get them back. Aliandra's like, I understand what you did, Anora, just don't do more shit like that. Um, and basically, Aliandor has a real talk. Oh, at this point, by the way, you meet uh, Alistair's sister, his half-sister, if you do his personal quest, and you have the choice to harden him, because she's always like, oh, fuck you, you fucking uh, royal boy, I bet you're just going to be king, you're not even going to give me any money, and she's like, basically this, this really ruthless, ruthless bitch. And after that, you get a talk with Alistair, and you either got to be like, you know what, some people are shitty, but some people are good, and you should stay the way you are, Alistair, you should keep being good. Or you get the chance to harden Alistair by being like, yeah, well, it kind of sucks, but we're just doing what we can. Aliandor hardened Alistair, which sounds really weird. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> Aliandor has another real talk with Alistair, and he's like, look, man, you've got Theron blood in you, and the people are going to love it if you're king. But I'm going to be with you, you'd be a shitty king, man. You know who was, uh, would be a good queen, though? Anora. She's a great tactician. She knows all about politics. You guys should get married. And Alistair's like, what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Um, but Aliandra's like, come on. I mean, I know it's kind of hottie, though. No, it's kind of a hottie. Um, so they agree to get married after the lands meet. All of the Arls and bands side with the Wardens, except for one fucking dude who's in the books, who's always on Logan's side. Loghain challenges you to a duel. You defeat Loghain. This is where Aliandra makes him into a warden. Also in Arl House Estate was this fucking, fucking uh, deus ex machina Grey Warden character named Riordan, who's like, Oh, by the way, to kill an archdemon, you have to kill yourself. Oh, and also, by the way, um, I can make Loghain into a Grey Warden. That's the only reason uh, Riordan exists. Trolled. So, Loghain is made into a Grey Warden. Alistair and Nor get married. And it's time to fight Urthemiel, the fucking uh, demon. Morgan approaches you. She's like, have sex with me so you don't die because I love you. Um, fucking... So, yeah, so that's the lands meet. They go, you fight the fifth light and you end Othemio's life. So, there's three other story DLC I want to cover real quick for uh, Dragon Age Origins. First DLC is Awakening. Um, Awakening is basically after the events of Dragon Age Origins, uh, Alistair, or whoever rules, uh, basically gives you Arlathan. Arlathan is a city north in northern Ferelden. He's like, you're going to be the Arl of Arlathan, and also you're going to be the Warden Commander of Ferelden. And he gives you this place called Warden's Keep, which is near Arlathan. That's where he gave you Arlathan. Anyway, you roll Warden's Keep and you get to upgrade it. It's like a cool like fortress building thing. You get to conscript multiple companions into uh, Wardens. It's really cool. Uh, some of them even die when you're conscripting them. Um, but yeah, um, I'm just going to prattle. There are like, there's this one Dalish elf chick who's one of two Dalish companions you get in any of the games. I completely fucking forgot about her. She's basically not Morgan. She's angry. Humans killed her tribe, whatever. Fucking, fucking whatever. There's also this Legion of the Dead scout named Sigrun you can get. She's cool, but not worth mentioning, so I don't know why I mentioned her. Mm. The companions that really matter are Justice. Justice is a spirit of justice from the Fade. He inhabits a dead Grey Warden, and he lives, he basically helps you on your quest. Uh, just, like, you you learn more about this Grey Warden as you go along, and Justice is eventually like, man... I kind of like being a human, but I also need to really make it up to this dude's wife who didn't know that he died, and now she's scared because I'm a fucking spirit possessing his body or whatever. So you go do that with Justice. Your home is with Justice, basically. Another character, Anders. Anders is basically an apostate. He's escaped from the circle seven different times. He has How this the cat fuck do they keep letting him escape? If well, I basically, like, they keep fucking sending Templars after him and being like, no, no, get back here. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't killed him yet. And, and it's just, no. He's like this Han Solo-like character. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's really, he's this really cool spell slinger guy that gets a bunch Does, of bitches. Do you meet Anders in the base game? No, you only meet Anders in Awakening. I feel like you meet him in something else. You do. Oh. But we're getting to that. Oh, okay. 
Um, so yeah, Amos is cool. Other guy is Nathaniel Howe. He is Arl Howe's son, and he tries to steal shit from Warden's Keep, and he's like, you killed my daddy. Uh, fuck you. And yeah, you're I'll like, kill you and too. And you're like, well, listen here, boy. I killed your daddy because he was a bad man. But you'll be a great warden. You make it up. You clear the ha- you clear the Howe name. And, our- and Nathaniel's like, okay, cool. Um, right. Anyway, those are the three. Those are the three companions that actually fucking matter. Oh, oh. also, Ogren comes back, and Ogren becomes a great warden. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, near the end, you have another real talk with them, like Ogren. I thought you were gonna settle down with this girl, and she like comes back, just slaps, and she's like, "Motherfucker!" When I said it would be hot if you would be a great warden, we were just role playing, dude. Like, you didn't have to go <laughs> oh, and be a fucking great warden. <laughs> also, you have a son now, you fucking asshole. And Alien was like, Ogren. <laughs> So you have another real talk with Ogre, and you're like, dude, you better go fucking after this. I'm going to buy you a round of drinks. You're going to go be a family man, okay? And Ogre's like, okay. It sucks for you, though, because you can now have now Also, your yeah, great wardens, whenever you go through the joining, your, your fucking lifespan's cut in half, because eventually you'll, so, uh, you'll secede to the calling anyway and be forced to, like, go down and fight dark small with these birds. Um, anyway, so yeah. That's basically Awakening. Uh, it revolves around this guy named the Architect, who is a dark spawn. He's another Magister, Magister Sidereo. He's the architect of beauty, so he was Urthiniel's high priest. He remembers fucking nothing about his past, but his objective is to use Grey Warden blood to make Darkspawn go through another version of the joining that makes them sentient. And he thinks that this will stop the blights because Darkspawn will realize what they're doing is wrong. Um, he's kind of right because the Darkspawn that follow him, the disciples of the architect, they're like, yeah, we, we don't want to do blights anymore. But he fucking does this joining ritual to a brood mother named the Mother. She has like four different titties, and she, she's oh, like basically dude, the awakening. Dude, two in my mouth, um, two in my hands. Anyways, yeah, she leads the evil sentient dark spawn, um, and you have to kill her. Aliander was like, you know what, architect, you fucking do your own shit. You know, you, you fucking, you, you keep working on the joining thing. I'm sure it'll turn out good for you one day. Yes. All right. So for the soldiers' peak DLC, I got a quick question. Yes. Okay. Soldiers' peak. That's what I'm covering next. Uh, what do you want to know? Uh, I'll just cover soldiers' people quick. All right. So also during the main game, um, there's two like other main story DLCs. One where you where you restore to uh, Ostagar and you give Kaelin a proper burial, and another one where you um, not go, Duncan. <laughs> uh, not Duncan. I think his body's gone. <laughs> and another one and another one where you go and uh, to Soldiers Peak to figure out what happened to Sophia Dryden to clear the family name. To figure out Sophia Dryden was possessed by a demon and she's been alive this whole time. You basically got to kill her, but her mage advisor, a guy named Avernus, yes, spelled exactly like that, mm. guy named Avernus, um, he's like, I've been conducting experiments on Grey Warden blood, and I think I can figure out a cure for the calling or whatever. He's like, yeah, continue, Aliando's like, continue to research, do it ethically, whatever. Yeah, so that's what happens. Okay, so in does, he ever, yeah. Yeah, does he ever, like, does he ever, like, finally get cure? Uh, we don't know. We also know that the Warden... There's the a Dragon Age 2 side quest. We know that the hero of Ferelden um, also gets, uh, he eventually starts working on a cure for the Blight as well. Um, anyway, um, fucking uh, Golems of Amgarak. You fucking, the Warden is called on by this dwarf dude to go into a tide and figure out some weird Lyrian shit. It's this like story that basically doesn't fucking matter, but yeah, that's something that the Warden did. He okay. went to an old dwarven tide and figured out weird Lyrian magic. <laughs> that never comes up again. And also, there was a golem that was a mage there. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, the final DLC for Dragon Age Origins is Witch Hunt. Um, Witch Hunt is where you go after Morgan because you're like Morgan. After you fucking defeat Urthemiel, she just disappears. After you fuck Morgan. Yeah, she's like you. You. She's like we're gonna have a child. You're never gonna see me again because I need to do my own shit right now. Even though I wish we could stay together. She fucking disappears, so Witch Hunt is all about going to find Morgan. It's a cool journey to the end of the world, just a man and his dog, and there's these two young adventurers that you meet on the way, their names are like Finn and something else, like this Gaelish elf woman. She's like this Gaelish elf woman, and they have like cool party banter together, because they're just like these two kids that you essentially like pick up through your adventure to find Morgan, and they start like bonding and sort of like flirting together, and it's like, oh, that's what me and Morgan must be looked like all that time ago. Um, it's just a, it's a fun little to see their dynamic, and I didn't put them up on the board here because they're not important enough to mention. But I do like those characters a lot, and they are actually mentioned in the world play this volume one as people who just adventure together, and it's cool. Um, will, will we get to meet them? No, 
Oh. <laughs> I can still need them. Anyway, uh, Aleandor eventually meets Morgan. She's standing outside of an alluvian. An alluvian is a weird elven mirror that acts as a nether portal. And <laughs> Actually? Yeah, it's basically a nether portal. And you it brings you to the faster in that world? Yes, because there are multiple alluvians. And alluvians, like, you go into an alluvian, you get to this place called the Crossroads. See, there's an, another alluvian over there. You walk through it, and you're in an entirely different place. It's basically like the nether. Huh. Um... But yeah, uh, yeah Morgan's like, go. I need to fucking do this shit by myself. And Aliander's like, no, we're going to fucking raise this kid together. And she's like, okay, that's cool. And, um, this fucking sucks. And then you find out that they're and fucking blood, god child. Aliander and Morgan go off into the crossroads to raise their kid, which is named Kieran. He's an old god baby, and he comes back into Inquisition. Yep. That's the end of Origins. Any questions? Holy fuck, Origins lasted a very long time. No, uh, it's Origins. Yeah. Uh, it's the origins. How let's long is Dragon Age 2? Alright, um, uh, bonk. It's gonna be pretty short. It's the shortest game, for sure. And I can just <laughs> prattle through Inquisition. Um, okay, so, Dragon Age 2, getting into Dragon Age 2, uh, it is my favorite game in the series because of the story. I'm gonna be real with you right now, the gameplay and, like, the mechanics of the game are not that great, and, um, it really shows that this game was rushed by EA. But the story of Dragon Age 2 is the best one in the series. So basically, I'm afraid I won't be able to do it too much justice here, but it's great and it's, it's very it's fucking hard to tell. Um, basically, uh, EA, or like this, the fucking creative director for Dragon Age, this guy named um, David Gator, uh, he yeah. also wrote a few of the books. Gator. Um, he was like, he had this really cool idea for a uh, trilogy of Dragon Age games. Uh, Origins was like its own little uh, experiment, and once they realized that this Thetis world could actually work, David Gator said about making a trilogy. It was going to be centered around Hawk, uh, Marion Hawk, or Garrett Hawk, who was going to be like the General Shepherd, our Commander Shepherd for Mass Effect, or for Dragon Age. Hawk, they were going to be like this sort of like more defined character that you would see grow throughout three games, and it would be really cool. Um, anyway, so David Gator presents this idea to EA. EA says, cool, make it a game in 12 months. He goes, so, fuck. <laughs> he goes, shit. <laughs> About that. Classic <laughs> EA. <laughs> so, nice. this game is rushed from original concept to release date. This game had about 16 months total. Fuck. Six to, 14 to 16. Um, That's really it really bad. shows that the writing is very good in this game, but the game it reuses environments, it does all this bad shit. So the writing, the writing was is so made good. so long ago, probably. Right, and but like the game had really bad reception, and unfortunately Hawk received most of this bad reception, because what people were mainly pissed about was that you couldn't play other races, you were basically forced to play a human. And people didn't like that, so EA was like, well, we can't do that Hawk shit anymore. Um, and David Gator got really depressed that his epic trilogy couldn't come into fruition, he quit Bioware not long after. Um, but yeah, Bro, so that's, people that's the tragedy of Dragon Age 2. And like, years later, people have been like, man, maybe Hawk should have been the protagonist of Inquisition, actually. I mean, because that's what they did with Commander Shepard. Exactly. You, you were forced to be a human, but like, that was the cool part about it. Like, exactly. And you know all this history about Earth, and so whenever you go in cool to learn character. about this alien history and shit, you're like, ooh. Yeah, and Hawk is such a cool character as well. And like, I do not feel connected to my Inquisitor at all. Because, first of all, they scrapped Origins, so what is the point of having... Like, the origin system is the, is the idea of, like, in Origins, you had six different origins, and the campaign varies massively depending on which origin you took. I just took the Elf Mage origin, and that's, like, one of the shortest, or, like, origins that you can, like, one of the least intensive ones. There's, like, Human Noble, which is, like, very fucking um, deep and ingrained with the story and shit like that. So, in Inquisition, they didn't have origins. So what was the point of playing other races if you were just going to be the same fucking... So you always get, like, the same, like, start. Basically, you always get the same start. It's never, like, a very... Yeah, it's, it, and barely anyone ever mentions your race. That Fallout 4 type shit, right? Yeah, it's, like it's very like fucking... In, so Inquisition, first of all, what's the point of playing other races? Yeah. You can really tell that Mary and Hawk was meant to be the uh, protagonist of that game, too. Just make Mary and Hawk. Um, That's fucking... But she'll, she'll come back in the credits, I'm sure. <laughs> Anyway, so I've already described the prologue of Dragon Age 2 to you. So, uh, basically, when the Hawk family gets in Kirkwall, um, they're like, uh, the mother uh, was basically like, uh, I come from the MLs, and we're very, like, well-known. Like, we, we have estates. My, my cousin, whose name I'm blanking on right now, um, I think his name's Garen. 
he's like, my or my brother, he'll be able to hook us up with our estate. And he's like, well, actually, I gambled the entire estate away, and we have no more money. Trolls. Um, and she's like, that is oh, shit. So basically, Hawk, uh, or I'm gonna I'm gonna say Marion, but most people refer to her as Hawk in the game. Um, so Marion and Carver are basically forced to work with this mercenary band for a year to get like to pay their way into Kirkwall. And they eventually do, and they live in Lowtown. Kirkwall is separated into three areas. You got High Town, where the rich live, Low Town, where the poor live, and Dark Town, which is under the city, where the really poor live. <laughs> where the fucking hobos live. Um, anyway, so, this is where Act 1 really starts. So, Aveline becomes a member of the Guard. You remember her from earlier? Sir Wesley was the name of her husband. Yep. I don't know why that just came into my mind now. But Aveline is a member of the Guard, and basically, um, that, yeah, that's what happened with her. Um, there's this dwarf man named uh, fucking Bartrand. Um, and he is the brother of this guy over here, Varric. Uh, they're the Teftless brothers of dwarves. Bartrand is planning a deep roads expedition to find a lost dwarven tide. And Hawk and Carver are like, we should be on this expedition because we're skilled and also can make us a lot of gold. Bartrand's like, we're full up. We're full up. We can't invite you on. Varric comes on the scene and he's like, Big dick. But we could get you on if you raise 50 gold, and 50 gold's a huge number, but Hawk's like, we can fucking do that. So, let's go into the companions and the villains for Dragon Age 2. Varric Tethris. He's a rogue dwarf. He's got this cool repeating crossbow. He's got this open chest vest. He's such a fucking chad. It's a shame that you can't romance him. Really? Also, you can't. I'm mm -hmm. done. There, um, the entire game of Dragon Age 2 is basically told, because it opens up with Varric being dragged into a, uh, into a, a like, a, in, uh, interrogation chair, essentially, and this woman named Cassandra, or Seeker Pentagast, she's interrogating him about the events of Dragon Age 2. So the entirety of this game is told through Varric, um, uh, in the future, yeah. Uh, Carver slash Bethany. So... If you choose to play as a rogue or a warrior, Bethany survives and Carver dies. If you choose to play as a mage, Carver survives and Bethany dies. Uh, you remember, Bethany's the mage, Carver's the warrior. So, um, yeah, so throughout the, you've only got one hot twin. I had Carver, so that's the one I'm going to talk about. Bethany's uh, boring anyway. She's just happy and bright all the time. Carver has actual conflict with, uh, with Hawk, and that's why I really like just having him there. Because he, um, he's, like, very jealous of Marion and how she's, Wait, so like, the older sister, sister, right? Yes, the older sibling is Your Marianne. character. Yes. And so you can... And then you have two little twins, uh, uh, siblings? Yes. And then, depending on what you choose... What, One of them dies. Why? Yes. Damn. Anyway, Carver doesn't really like you that much as Marion. You have sibling rivalry, and, um, eventually he can either die... Yeah, at the end of act, at the end of act one, three things can happen to either of these twins. They can either die, they can almost die, and then Anders makes them into a great warden. Because by the way, Anders comes back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, Bro, or, yeah. or Bethany is forced to join the Circle of Magi, and Carver join or Carver joins the Templar Order of his own free will. So, Carver, my Carver, joined the Templar Order. Because he doesn't like Hawk, he doesn't like mages. And he's like, you know what? You can go off and fucking live your fucking free life or whatever. I'm not going to turn you in, but just know, like, I'm actually putting my fucking seeds. Like, I, he's, he's putting his foot down. He's like, I'm going to work for the Templar Order because I, no. I don't trust you to make a good living for the family. Oh, shit. That might be a big yeah. fuck you moment later down the line. And then, um, so I'm going to go into Mary Hawk. Um, she's very sarcastic and very cocky. At least the way I played her. I played, um... Uh, it's known as Purple Hawk when you choose most of the sarc sarcastic lines. Um, Red Hawk is aggressive, and Blue Hawk is diplomatic. My Hawk is Purple Hawk. She's very sarcastic and very cocky. Um, and she's a mage, and she's like pro-mage rights, um, but she's not a fucking terrorist. And that's important for later on. Aveline, you already know about Aveline. Her personal quest is basically all about... Um, she becomes, like, she realizes that there's corruption in the guard ranks, you help her to become captain of the guard, and then you basically just friends with her throughout the whole thing. She eventually meets this guy named uh, Darren or something like that, and Darren's a, like, a lower-ranking guardsman that she wants to wed. Um, and, like, you help, you basically help Aveline to become, uh, like, to marry this guy and become guard captain. And Aveline's very cool. 
Anders, cocky mage guy. So Anders comes from uh, Arl or fucking Amaranthine, right? And he's all like, hey, um... <laughs> he basically lives in Darktown. Uh, he's like, he's a, um... He's a healer, like he's this, he runs this clinic in Darktown, um, and he, like, he still has the Grey Worm blood and everything in him, but he decided to quit and move up to Kirkwall. So he helps heal for all the refugees and all this shit. Same way where I quit. And you meet uh, with Anders, and you learn uh, through the court, like, so he, his first quest is you gotta break his friend out of the circle before he becomes tranquil. When you get there, his friend's already tranquil. No. Um, tranquil is the process of disconnecting the mage from the fade. It removes their personality and their emotions and also their magic. Cool. So, um, he gets there, he realizes that his friend is already tranquil, and Anders gets pissed. So pissed, in fact, that his eyes turn blue and he starts speaking in this godly voice. What this the is fuck? <laughs> okay, you can knock it back. No, 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 I'm explaining it. This is because Anders has been possessed by justice. So justice, justice, and and like justice, like I can't continue being in this body, man. Um, but we have similar goals, so let's let's go, and we're gonna be justice. Um, so uh, Anders invites justice into his body, essentially. Um, throughout the game, and like in Act One, Anders is mostly Anders, and Act Two, Anders is basically all about justice. He's like, fucking fuck Templars, they're fucking up mages, and you know what? We can't stand for this injustice. In Act 3, Anders' personality mixes with Justice's personality. Justice is transformed into a demon of vengeance. By Act 3, Anders has become vengeance, and he becomes a terrorist, and he wants to fucking mage rights all the way. Let's kill Templars willy-nilly. Let's just do all this bullshit. That is Anders' tragic arc throughout Dragon Age 2. And you'll learn that Dragon Age 2 is mostly tragic. Uh, Meryl is a hot Dalish elf mage. She's the first in her clan. You can actually meet her if you're if you're a Dale Shelf in the original game. Like she's one of your um, clan mates. Um, anyway, so in Dragon Age Two, um, the like her people don't want her around because she's a blood mage, and she's like, well, spirits can help us if we're careful. Um, and Hawk is like, God damn, she's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Hawk is like, well, I'll just take you away from your clan since they don't like you, and also I'm gonna fuck you as well. <laughs> Um, and so that's what happens, they start a romance. Throughout Meryl's quest, um, you learn, like, this demon becomes more and more, like, infatuated with her. She eventually repairs an alluvion, which she found, like, years ago back in Ferelden. Um, and also this demon, uh, of, this demon of pride, uh, it basically all culminates, this demon is named Audacity. And it, the audacity. The audacity. <laughs> it possesses Keeper Marathari, who was uh, Meryl's trainer. Um, so you've got to kill Keeper Marathari. She's like, the, like, actually, Keeper Marathari. She invited the demon into herself specifically so that she could save Meryl from being possessed. So Hawk is like, son of a bitch. I knew this blood magic shit wasn't gonna pay off, Meryl. Let's fucking kill this thing, and then we gotta have a talk. So as you're walking out of the cave, the entire Dalish clan rocks up and like. Mm -hmm. Where's the keeper, Meryl? What's he? What's he doing here? Where's the keeper? And Hawk's like, well, uh, I fucking killed her. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and also, I take full responsibility for her actions. Um, there are multiple ways you can end. You can either turn Meryl in. I think you can take responsibility for her actions, and the Dalish clan don't try to kill you, or you have, or you're forced into squattering. Uh, Meryl's entire clan. Oh, I fucking slaughtered them all. And uh, in a they, 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 I. I I made some fucking bad dialogue choices in my first playthrough, I ended up slaughtering them all. This playthrough, I ended up saving them. Alright. Uh, but yeah, let's throw down on Meryl and Hawk. Isabella is a hot pirate bitch from Ravain. Oh. Um, and she is basically, like, lives, well, she fucks a lot of people, fuck Hawk as well. Um, uh, and she, throughout the course of the story, you learn that she stole a religious text from the Kuhn, because also the Kunari crash land <laughs> in Kirkwall. And the era shock's there. And fucking Isabella actually ended up stealing this religious text. She doesn't tell you until the end of Act 2, where she runs away, but my Hawk had an approval rating that Isabella came back, she turned the book into the Kuhn, and Hawk was able to uh, do some special stuff. Solve some like. things out. Fenris is an escaped elven slave um, uh, from Taventer. He has these weird lyrium uh, ballast things on him. He can like move through shit using magic. Um, and also his plot revolves around basically teaching him that mages aren't all that bad. And also let's kill your ex-slave master. 
Sebastian is a prince from Starkhaven. He was exiled because the, the Vale family line was entirely uh, killed, and he becomes a chantry boy. And Sebastian, this whole quest is about making him realize that, yeah, he's cool to be part of chantry and everything, but eventually I do have to go back to Starkhaven and become the prince again. Um, and also, Sebastian is start, uh, start staunchly against mages. And he will um, leave you if you side with the mages in the end and keep that his alive. Uh, Talus is a stupid fucking character voiced by Felicia Day, and I hate her. She's a DLC companion, and she doesn't matter too much. We'll get to her when we get to her. Same. So, um, all right. Um, so yeah, Act One is all about gathering enough coin for Bartram. You go on this Bartram. deep roads expedition, and your mother's like. Hey, can Carver stay here, actually? Because I don't want Carver running around there. I don't want you to both get killed. And Hawk's like, that's a good idea. Carver, you stay with Mom. And Carver's like, mm, fucking bitch, I'm going to go become a Templar. He's like, okay. <laughs> um, okay, buddy, whatever you say. <laughs> and then he fucking does it and just kills you. <laughs> and then he does it, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so that's uh, Act 1. You go into the Deep Roads Expedition. Bodan, Fedek, and Sandal are also there. They're cool. Um... Eventually, you find this red lyrium idol. Red lyrium is blinded lyrium, suggesting that lyrium is actually alive. You find okay. this red lyrium idol. Bartrand goes and stay insane and locks you in the tide, so you have to fight your way through. But the crew gets a bunch of riches from the tide anyway and fucks up a demon down there. So they come back to Kirkwall and basically they're kind of like they're kind of like big figures in Kirkwall now. And that's the that's what Act One is all about. It's basically this deep roads expedition uh, and all about that. Let's Act go. two, Act two is about the Canari and rising tensions with them. So the Canari have been given a little section in Kirkwall's docks to just hang out. Uh, oh, and also at the end of Act one, you get um, the old Hawk Estate back, or the old Amel Estate back, and that's where you get uh. the rest of the game. So Act two is about rising tensions between the Canari and the uh, citizens of Kirkwall. Um, the Canari are mad. No one knows why they're mad. Um, anyway. They're pissed though. <laughs> If you get four approval points with the era shock, where, like four, it's four a lot. Yes. Okay. If you get four respect points with era shock, who's the leader of the Cunari in Kirkwall and everywhere, presumably, he's like the leader of the fucking military. Um, he names you Basiliton, and Basiliton is honored um, outsider of the queue. So Hawk gained Basiliton status. And that's why um, some shit happens later on. Basically, there's this Chantry sister that like kept manipulating the Canari into doing stupid shit to make the citizens of Kirkwall hate them even more and more. Um, and like she was working with the Templar as well that helps her out. Eventually, Hawk is like, fuck you, and just fucking kills her. <laughs> um, dude, dude, Hawk is base. She is. She is very base. Um, anyway, at the end of Act 2, Aveline's like, Hawk... Fucking need you to help me with the situation. The Canari are getting mad. Um, also, they have inducted two elven uh, criminals into the Kuhn, um, which gives them fucking political freedom, according to them. But actually, we need to prosecute those prisoners. So, Elf, so Hawk's like, well, all right, fucking going down. And, she, and Aveline's like, specifically, the Arashok only wants to talk to you, Hawk. Um, so that's where Hawk has to go along. Um, there you learn that the elven prisoners, the only reason they were prisoners, was because they killed a guard that raped their sister. Um, and, and, uh, and Hawk turns to Aveline, and she's like, Aveline, is this true? And, and Aveline's like, well, fucking, it was, I, I guess I wasn't told about this, but we'll get it sorted out. We just need the fucking prisoners. And Hawk's like, okay, I understand why you're doing this, Aeroshock, but we, we can sort this out the, the human way. We have our own system here in Kirkwall. We can't be fucking doing this. Uh, Kirk, and Aeroshock's like, the time for talk is over, and the Canari start assaulting Kirkwall. Oh, okay. So there's this big war. Um, throughout this big battle of Kirkwall, you meet Knight Commander Meredith, um, who is um, she's the Templar commander in Kirkwall, and uh, you also meet First Enchanter Orsino. Um, these are two big players in Act Three because uh, they're like the big fucking the big fucking uh, basically Dragon Age Two was supposed to set up this trilogy, and the big fucking point of contention is setting up what will become the Mage Templar War. So, you meet both of them throughout this quest. They help you out in various ways. Um, eventually, Hawk gets to the, uh, she gets to the big uh, hall 
Uh, she learns that the error shock has fucking killed the Viscount of Kirkwall, who she had been working with, the Cavaloon, this whole time. Right. And she's like, well, goddammit. This is where Isabella comes back, and she's like, oh, I've got the fucking book here. I'm sorry for abandoning you earlier, Hawk. I hope I can make this up to you. And Hawk's like, fucking great. It's and she gives she gives the book to error shock, and error shock's like, this is good, but also we're going to take Isabella as well. Uh, and Isabella's like, what the fuck? I, I just gave this back. And Aeroshock's like, well, you're a prisoner of the Kuhn because you did bad shit, so we have to take you. And Hawk's like, son of a bitch, we can't let that happen. Uh, I'm sorry, but we fucking will deal with her, you know? And Aeroshock's like, you know what? I will duel you one-on-one, -on -one, Hawk, because you are Basili Don. And Hawk has this big fucking epic duel with the Aeroshock. Kills him. The rest of the Kinari. Yeah, they did like, <laughs> the, the rest of the Kinari give each other like a nod of affirmation. They just leave peacefully after Hawk kills the other Because like, what are they gonna do? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Yeah, it's still good. Um, you so, have yeah. to itch your nuts and look That's around. That's the end of Act Two. Okay. Mark of the Assassin. Uh, Mark of the Assassin uh, is a DLC where Hawk is invited to this banquet by this fucking. This Duke Prideful, I think is his name. He's a fucking, uh, or Duke Providence. He's a fucking Orlesian Duke. And also, this is where you meet Talus. She's an elf who's also an assassin and also a Ben Hasrath because she's part of the Canari. And also, she's voiced by Alicia fucking day. Um, <laughs> and um, basically, throughout the, throughout the entire, it's basically like a setup for a heist. She's like, well, there's this jewel that Duke uh, Providence has. Um, and it's this jewel called the Heart of the Many, and we're gonna just fucking use this invitation to get our asses in there, and we're gonna steal this fucking jewel. So it's set up like a heist movie, and you go in there, and eventually, like, you get to this jewel, uh, but it's not a jewel, and actually there was just a trap waiting for you. So Hawk's like, tell us what the fuck happened, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, well, let me tell you really what's happening. So Heart of the Many, Vin Hasrath translates to Heart of the Many in fucking tune. And uh, Talos reveals that she is a bit Hasrath. And she came here because there is a Kunari that's about to sell a list of names, an ex Kunari, so a Talvashok, which is what uh, Kunari that fucking decided to defect from the Kunis so squad. He's got this list of names of people throughout the fucking world that have, are secret Kunari agents. And he's just going to give this to Duke Prideful. And Talos is like, I can't fucking let this happen because so many innocent people are going to die. Just because they're agents of the Kun doesn't mean they want war. So you basically help Talos out with the shit, and Talos is like, thank you for helping me out. And also Duke Prideful has a big wife and many rides on. Uh, you mean a dragon? <laughs> no, it's separate. Uh, okay. How? And also, you fucking... <laughs> I don't understand. No, do I. You fucking kill Duke Prideful, and oh, okay. it's, it's cool. Okay, yeah. you fucking kill him. You just fucking kill him. Hawk just fucking kills people. <laughs> for like no reason, I'm like... No, no, she has good reasons. Okay, Legacy DLC. The DLC that actually fucking matters. Um, Carver and Marion have been having assassins sent after them left and right. Carta assassins specifically. Carta are um, dwarf smugglers. Uh, so we learn that these Carta and the fucking Anderfels, I think it is, they are called. They are being influenced by some force that wants them to seek out the Hawk bloodline. And we learn the reason is like this force that's calling out to them is Corypheus. And the reason he wants specifically Hawk blood is because he knows that the last mage to use the blood magic ritual to seal him into the Grey Warden prison was Malcolm Hawk. What? So, this is why they need Hawk blood to get Corypheus out of there. Um, eventually, meet up with this crazy Grey Warden, and he's like, Man, we get fucking. We have to kill Corypheus. And you meet up with this other Grey Warden mage, who's like, No, we can use Corypheus to stop the blights. Uh, you have to choose between them. Hawk chose... Uh, at first she chose the mage because she made sense, but then she realized she was also insane and just decided with the other guy. Um, uh, fucking... But yeah, the, the ritual to open Corypheus' tomb was already started, so the Grey Lord was like, we, ha we have to fucking kill Corypheus now. So Corypheus wakes up, he's like, oh, Dumat, oh, what the fuck, Dumat, where are you? Why can't I not hear you? Whoa, um, where am I? And what basically, is? Hawk and the gang fight... Corypheus. Corypheus dies. But you guys remember what happens when Corypheus dies. Oh no. So Corypheus dies, the Grey Warden's like, thank you for helping. Wait. And I'm gonna go do shit now. <laughs> Bye. Did anyway. you do in your mom? So yeah, that's all of them. Act 3. Um, Hawk has been named Champion of Kirkwall. 
Night Commander Meredith has gone mad with power since the Viscount died. She refuses, she refuses to let another person be named Viscount, so she takes control of the city. She's basically like, mages suck, but I don't want to, I, I, I want to keep my image pure, so I'm not just going to kill mages for no reason. But she's like, I got my fucking eyes on you, Hawk. And Hawk teams up with Orsino, and she's like, we got to fucking stop Meredith from doing something stupid, guy. Um, and Orsino agrees. So, um, yeah, you just sort of help uh, Orsino try and prove Night Commander Meredith. The mages aren't all that bad. But it ends in this confrontation uh, in the docks, where Night Commander Meredith and Orsino are fucking like yelling at each other, and Meredith's like, mages are evil, and Orsino's like, not all of us. And then Hawk's like, well, we can try to broker peace here, guys. And then Anvis is like, no, we fucking can't. And he blows up the chantry. <laughs> Maker, no! Maker, no! Athena, no! no! That's the famous Sebastian line that he says here. Um, so, basically, Hawk's like, what the fuck, Anders? This is what starts the Mage Templar War in Kirkwall. Uh, Hawk sides with the mages because Anders fucking did this. And she talks to Anders and she's like, Dude, you're fucking too far gone, but I'm not gonna kill you because Meryl doesn't want me to kill you. And so that's why she lets Anders just walk away from it all, essentially. Um, Sebastian, he's like, fuck this, I'm going to Starkhaven and we're gonna invade Kirkwall. Well, Sebastian. Uh, fucking, and Hawk's like, okay, buddy. <laughs> um, anyway. Hawk sides with Orsino, you're killing, t mages and Templars are dying left and right. Orsino turns himself into a fucking abomination for no goddamn okay. reasons, so you have to kill uh, Orsino as well as Night Commander Meredith. Anyway, it's revealed that Night Commander Meredith has the Lyrium Idol that was given to her by Bartrand, and she's put it in her sword, and it's driven her crazy, and that's why she's so anti-mage. Um, and you fucking kill that Commander Meredith. She can use the sword to like command all the statues around Kirkwall to attack you too. So it's this big epic fight. Um, Zevran, like Nathaniel Howe and Zevran are like characters you can meet in side quests as well. Uh, Zevran is implied to have like had a very intense sexual relationship with Isabella. They're very cool. Anyway, they all come back in the final fight to kick Meredith's ass. And just as she's about to do her final fuck off attack, she turns into a, a bronze statue, and the sword shatters into a million pieces. Hawk's like, well, we gotta go now, because technically I'm an outlaw. She gives like a nod to Aveline, and Aveline's like, God damn it, we, we gotta fucking, we gotta go, Hawk, I'm sorry. And that's how Act 3 ends, with everyone just walking away. That's not how uh, the game was supposed to end, though. Cause there, was, there was a DLC called The Exalted March that got cancelled because they had to fucking switch over to the Frostbite engine for Inquisition. The cancellation of Exalted March... Uh, drove David Gator even further into his depression, uh, and he stopped working for months. He just he just stopped writing no! <laughs> for months. Maker, after, no, Maker, no, Maker, no. After fucking after that. Um, any questions about Dragon Age Two? I'm sorry we had to skim through that. Maker, no. Maker, no. Cool. Um, let's check them. Sorry, gotta have to skim through Inquisition even fucking faster. Companions, Barrack again. Varric is back. He's cool. It's fucking Varric. Cassandra Pentagast. She's a Seeker. The Seeker Lord is basically a disbanded at this point. Oh, also, mages are fighting Templars in an all-out war. Mages have decided to break away from the Chantry, and so have the Templars. They're not a part of the Chantry anymore. Uh, Inquisi the second Inquisition is formed by Seeker Pentagast. Um, Liliana is uh, what part of there. Uh, Colin's Liliana's part of there. Liliana's there. Liliana's there, and Colin's there, and this bitch called Josephine is there, and she's your ambassador. Josephine! Uh, they form the Inquisition. Cassandra and Cassandra's questline is all about reforming the Seekers of Truth and making them cool again. Solus is a bald elf apostate. <laughs> He's really cool. My, my nah. Inquisitor, like, you can only romance Solus if you're a female elf, which my Inquisitor was. She was a female Baelish. Um, and she was like, we have to, um, she was like, you're very cool. Solus, basically, he walks the Fade in his dreams, and he learns about ancient elven history through places that he visits in the Fade. Um, he's really cool, he has a bald head, and he's, his friends are spirits, uh, mostly. Dorian is a Tevinter Magister, but he doesn't like slavery, and he doesn't like all this blood magic shit that's happening in Tevinter. You meet him when you do the Mage Quest line, and he's like, um, let's be buddies. Yep. No. Um, no way. So yeah, that's Dorian. He's also a closet gay, and that's why he ran away from Tevinter, because his dad was like, we need you to marry this other magister bitch, because the bloodline will remain pure or whatever. But Dorian's like, I don't like chicks, and so that's why he ran away. 
Anyway, he ends up reconciling with his father and returning to the Magisterium, but he stays gay. Um, he starts this sort of like political revolution in Tevinter, where his party and uh, I think they're called, oh, I forgot what their fucking party's called, but he teams up with this other girl called Mae Maris, and they start a party that's against slavery. And they've got at least 35% of the Magisterium Council on their side. Um, Iron Bull is a Kunari Ben Hasrath. When you first meet him, he's like, hey, I'm a Ben Hasrath just to let you know I'm going to be spying on you. <laughs> um, and and Kazuda's is like, fucking cool. I'm glad that you just told me that. Um, instead of keeping it a secret. Iron Bull leads a mercenary group called the Chargers. Um, they're very cool. Uh, Iron Bull's quest line culminates when you have to... So the Kunari are reaching out to the Inquisition for an alliance, but... Um, Essentially, you have to choose between keeping the Chargers alive or keeping the Kunari Dreadnought alive. My Inquisitor chose to keep the Chargers alive because the Kunari have never been known to side with anyone in all of fucking history. Um, so Iron Bull, if you but if you side with the Kunari and the Chargers die, Iron Bull turns on you later in the final DLC, and it's really cool. Um, Cole. Cole is a spirit that took the form of a human boy. Cole is a spirit that took the form of a human. No. <laughs> he took the form of a human boy that was dying in a in a fucking jail cell. Um, the real Cole was an apostate that the Templars just forgot about. They locked him up, lost the key, whatever, and he starved to death in a jail cell. But Cole, a spirit of compassion, uh, reached out to the real Cole, and his memories impacted him so much that the spirit of compassion became a real physical being modeled after the real Cole on the material plane. Um, his quest is all about deciding whether he should be more human or more spirit. Varric wants him to be more human, Solus wants him to be more like a spirit. My Inquisitor chose to make him more like a spirit because she was trying to suck Solus's cock. Um, Sarah is the worst fucking character in the game. I'm erasing her name, actually. Blackwall is a Grey Warden who you meet, and he's like, hey, I got all these treaties to help out the Inquisition. Also, you learn later on that he's not really Blackwall. The real Blackwall Grey Warden died on their way to Weishaupt to conscript him. His name is actually Tom Rainier. Um, and his treaties were real, but uh, uh, fucking, they get you into political trouble because it's like, he's not a real real warden. You basically have to bust him out of jail and decide, um, like, A, you should repent for your sins, A, you should go become a real great warden, or A, you should fucking die. <laughs> um, my great warden, or my inquisitor decided he should repent for his sins and stay alive and serve the inquisition. Vivian is a mage, uh, a circle mage, and she wants, uh, everything to be how it was, basically. She wants the circle back, she wants the Templars back, all that shit. Villains. Uh, Corypheus again. No. It's just Corypheus again, no. and this time he's got red lyrium sticking out of him. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I. I thought he was spirit plasma. And Corypheus is... <laughs> Corypheus so, has this thing. Don't laugh at him saying that. Oh, Corypheus has this thing called the Foci. Like also, Corypheus does a terrorist attack on the Conclave. Basically, just divides the of the Fifth, calls a Good Conclave enough. for the mage leaders to talk to the Templar leaders. It gets bombed. The mm -hmm. only survivor is your character who gets this weird mark on their hand. Uh, the bomb actually turned into a big rift in the sky that invited demons in. There are also smaller rifts all over the place. Yeah, so basically, left. the world is being uh, fucking ravaged by the creatures from the Fade. And only the Inquisitor has the power to stop it. And that's why she became the most powerful fucking person in the world. Um, yeah, that's the conclusion that's made simple for war dealt with. Um, okay. Um, also, Corypheus has a dragon. It's kind of an archdemon. It's a dragon that looks like an archdemon. What? But in reality, it's a high dragon that he corrupted with the Blight to become an uh, look like an archdemon. It's oh. not really an archdemon. Okay. <sighs> fucking hell, what am I doing? Okay, Wrath of Heaven. This is where Cassandra pulls you out of the fucking wreck. Of uh, the conclave, she's like, and fucking asking you why you fucking survived and everyone else died. I'm like, I don't know. Um, my fucking little Dale on Shelf Inquisitor uh, fucking doesn't know jack shit. Um, but eventually she's able to like start closing rifts with the why help of Solus. Why was the there? Fucking, it's because Clan Lavellan sent her to spy on the conclave or something. Okay. Like I said, there's no fucking point in having different races. Game. It should have just been a hawk. Ah. Um, in Hushed Whispers. So, this is an interesting quest because in Hushed, you can either do In Hushed Whispers, which is the mage quest, or you can do Champions of the Just, which is the Templar quest. You basically decide which faction you want to side with. In Hushed Whispers is cooler because you go, that's where you meet Dorian, and there's this Tevinter Magister there who's working on time magic, and he pulls you through a time rift, and you travel one year in the future, 
where Corypheus has taken over and everything's gone to shit. And oh. basically, in order to get back, Dorian has to take this guy's amulet back, and he has to perform an hour-long ritual, and you meet your companions in the future. At this time, I had uh, Blackwell and Varric with me, and Leliana's also there. And they're like, well, our future world is fucked up, but you can still go back and make time right. So we're just going to die trying to fucking protect you and trying to get Dorian to go back in time. Oh. And basically, that happens. Um, so you see your fucking companions die. You see Leliana die front of you, trying to defend you. No, Lilian. You go back in time, you kill the dude before he, you kill the dude right after he sends you forward. You fucking stab him. And then that's how you recruit Dorian. Then Cole comes, like, you're back at Haven, which is like the main Inquisition base right now. And Cole comes rushing through, he's like, Templars are coming, they're gonna attack us. And Griffiths is leading them. And Griffiths just shows up, he's got a cool fucking dragon. Templars Aww. attack Haven. The Inquisitor does her best to fucking get him to fuck off. But... Um, they win, basically. But she causes a... Uh, she, she basically distracts Corypheus while everyone in the Inquisition just goes out this fucking back pathway of Haven. Um, and she causes a, uh, a fucking mountain slide and the snow comes... The fucking what's avalanche to kill most of the Templars. And she tries to kill Corypheus, but he just flies away on this dragon. She lives because of plot convenience. She finds a cave and just goes through there. Meets... Meets up with all the Inquisition members somehow, just in the fucking mountains. They're just what there. The? Um, they start singing because, of course, that's the first thing you do after all of your people get fucking killed and your home gets destroyed. Would you not do that? Um, they sing a song like, oh, Herald of Andraste, because that's what they're calling the Inquisitor right now, because I think Andraste sent her in the Oh, uh, fucking. And your heart shall burn. Yeah, I think that's what I'm on right now. Uh, anyway, Solus pulls her aside and she and he's like, you gotta be a fucking champion for the people. You can make elves, you can make a difference for elves. And she's like, cool, let me kiss you now. Um, you. Here lies the abyss. Um, Varric is like, hey, uh, you know, Hawk, that cool character from the past game, uh, I've been in contact with her, and she's been in contact with the warden who thinks that he can help. And so you meet up with Hawk, Hawk's like, hey, I'm, I fuck bitches. That's me, I'm a Chad. Um, and you meet up with Hawk's Warden Contact, you get there to the cave where Hawk's Warden Contact is, bam, Loghain is there, Loghain is fucking Hawk's Warden Contact. If, if Loghain died in the first game and Alistair's a Warden, then it's Alistair. If Alistair is not a Warden and Loghain died, it's just some random fucking pussy named Stroud, who fucking helps you. Wait, how would you go there. about Alistair not being a Warden? Well, I mean, if he's king and stuff. Oh, well, then he won't be there, say. okay. Yeah, yeah. Um... So yeah, you meet up with Hawk, and you go to a big uh, warden fortress. Corypheus has a weird sway over wardens, so he's been commanding them at, uh, to Adamantine, the, it was what the fortress is called, to do blood magic and weird shit. You end up in the Fade with Hawk and Loghain, and in order to get to the uh, real world again, there's this portal, but in between you is this huge-ass fucking fear demon, and one of the people, either Hawk or Loghain, has to sacrifice themselves to distract the big fucking demon, uh, so the other two can get away. I obviously chose Logan to sacrifice himself because Hawk's my fucking girl. Um, so we got out of there, um, and we recruited the wardens to the Inquisition. So we got the wardens and the mages. Uh, Wicked eyes and wicked hearts. This is a, where you attend a royal ball for the Im, uh, Empire of Orlay. Uh, through events, you figure out, you decide who should be the next ruler, either uh, Duke Gaspard de Chalons or um, Empress Selene. Um, Empress Selene also used to have this elvish serving girl who was like her lover, and uh, her name is Briala. She's leading a, a bit of a political rebellion to help Elves now. They broke up because like Briala stole Alluvians or some shit and betrayed Selene. It's all covered in Masks of Empire. Anyway, my Inquisitor reunited Briala and Selene. Uh, Gaspard got fucking killed. Um, his sister was working with the Venatori, which are the Deventer cult that warships Corypheus. Um, she fucking the Inquisitor took her into custody and made her a spy for the Inquisition because she was really cool. Hmm. What pride had wrought? This is where you go. So you figure out that uh, Corypheus has been investigating these uh, old elven ruins uh, in the southern wilds and forests, and um, and you go there. And this you also meet Morrigan in uh, Wicked Eyes and Wicked Hearts. She has a son. She's like the warden banged me, and he was hot. And Cool. Let's go! Um, We're in. She has a son named Kira. Literally. You go to what pride of the rod. Eventually, like, you go through this temple, which has ancient elves in it, who only awake when their temple is being entered. Um, the Inquisitor's like, hey, let's be friends, because I'm also an elf. And they're like, okay, let's fight off these red Templars. 
together. Um, you also meet this guy named Samson, who's the leader of the Red Templars. He's a minor character in Dragon Age 2 who was an ex-Templar who was a lyrium addict. And in Dragon Age Inquisition, he's like the big fucking right-hand man of Corypheus, if you said it for the ages. It's, gone, huh? it's fucking weird. <laughs> um, anyway, okay. Morrigan is like, when you get to the, finally the Well of Sorrows, which is what Corypheus was after, um, no. Abelas, who's the ancient elf defending the place, is like, I'm not going to let anyone drink from it. And Morrigan is like, I should drink from it. And Solus is like, don't drink from that, because that's a bad idea. And then also Abelas suggests the Inquisitor drinks from it if anyone's going to drink from it. Morgan ends up drinking from the well. Um, the well grants her the power of Mithal, who's one of the elven goddesses, uh, but also Mithal has complete control of Morgan if ever she needs to control her. Very fucking important shit. Um, Solus, uh, you have a little romantic cutscene with Solus, where he tells you that the Valisleen, the blood riding on the Dalish, uh, that, that was actually used to catalog slaves, and also the ancient oh, elven gods... The ancient elven gods were actually really just powerful mages that everybody thought were gods. Oh, okay. um, I know how to remove the Valisleen, though, if you want me to remove them, and the Inquisitor is like, no, that's, all, that's cool, can I suck your dick now? And Solus is actually like, I would like it if you did, but actually, um, I know shit that would make that wrong, so we can't be a couple anymore. And Solus basically breaks up. Um, what? Unchat. Unchat. <laughs> um, Five minutes. Shit. Go. You, you fucking, you stopped it and... It, it's going. You have five minutes. Okay. You have five minutes. Uh, okay, so, uh, Doom Upon All the World. This is where you finally meet Corypheus, and you can kill him because Morrigan fucking... Oh, uh, so, he basically uses his dragon as a horcrux now. I don't know why he would ever decide to do that. But if you kill a dragon, you can kill Corypheus for good. So Morrigan, she learns how to shapeshift into a dragon, kills fucking, uh, the Corypheus' dragon... You kill Corypheus. Well, you send him into the... Like, you open up a Fade Rift inside of him. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the game. Jaws of Hack on DLC. This is where you meet Ameridin, and you figure out that he's been keeping Hack on with his breath and a fucking time lock for all these years. So you gotta... You gotta fucking... Ameridin kills himself. That fucking guy that so was... The, yeah, Ameridin. Remember dragon? the first Inquisitor? Oh all my those fucking god. Ago, you meet him. It's like the Dragonborn DLC, basically. Holy shit. <laughs> you meet the first Inquisitor... Uh, and he's like, I'm gonna free Hakon so you can kill Hakon, because that's the only way. So, you kill Hakon with his breath for good, um, and you gain the respect of the Avars and whatever. The Descent DLC. This is where you meet a shape rate. A shape rate's like a historian in dwarven history called, uh, na named Orda, and she teams up with the Legion of the Dead. And they're like, there have been fucking tremors in Orzammar, so we gotta go down into the fucking, in the fucking deep roads and figure out what's going on down there. And you figure out that it's a titan. Um, the Legion of the Dead guy dies. Or just like, hold on, the titan's inside me now so I can make peace with it. And you're like, cool. The fucking titan. A lot of lore just dropped that. I know, there's a, there's a fucking titan alive. Trespasser DLC! People were originally calling this egg hunt because at the end of Dragon Age Inquisition, Solus leaves. You don't know where it goes. Uh, they're calling right. it egg hunt because he's bald and looks like an egg. Also, oh. which, hunt, <laughs> which hunt was the name of Morgan's DLC from Dragon Age Origins? So, you're looking for Solus. Also, you call the Exalted Council, where you gotta decide whether the Inquisition stays the thing or should leave. <laughs> anyway, you eventually end up at the crossroads. The Kunari are there, they're trying to invade Ferelden again! I don't know what's happening! Uh, you fucking, you go to the crossroads, uh, Solus shows up and he kills all of the fucking things. Also, you know Flemeth? Flemeth is Mythal! She has Mythal's soul inside of her! Fucking no, wait, Solus wait, wait, wait. killed Flemeth! No question, no questions. Solus killed Flemeth because Solus is the dread wolf in Harrell! And wait, he's wait, also wait, an wait, elven wait, god! Wait, and also, uh, also, fucking you meet Solus and he's like, I'm sorry that all this had to happen, but now I've got to kill the world so we can bring back the elven empire, and I'm sorry, I love you, I've got to do this for our people. And roll credits! That's the end! Holy shit! Okay, so basically, basically, um, yeah, Plymouth is Mythal. I know we kind of just dropped that on you. Flemeth, Wait, so Morgan and Plymouth are now Mythal? No, um, okay, so Plymouth has Mythal's soul inside of her. Um, also, Plymouth meets up with you, he takes, uh, she gets to Kieran, and Morgan's like, don't you fucking touch Kieran, but she's like, it's okay. And she takes Kieran's old god soul out of him. And so right now, Morgan has three, or Plymouth has three souls inside of her. Mythal, uh, Urthimiel, and fucking Plymouth. And the post credit scene for the game we see her put a soul fragment into the mirror. It's my personal theory that she put Mithal's fragment in the mirror because she knew Solus would need the soul of a god in order to do what he's going to do. So Solus shows up and he's like, I fucking, because uh, Fen Harrell and Mithal go way back, and Mithal was the only other elven god that he liked because the others were all slave masters and they killed her. Uh, but it, her soul found Flemeth. Wait, okay. So anyway, Flemeth, uh, uh, Solus has to kill Flemeth to take the old god's soul out of her. 
Um, so Plymouth is fucking dead for sure. Holy and also, uh, Morgan is possibly even with all right now. Um, Holy shit. Uh, any questions? Okay, so one. I right? called Solus being a bad guy <laughs> literally weeks ago. <laughs> you did. Okay. I was like, I don't like that name. Sol- <laughs> Solus is, uh, has the soul of. What's Finn the Harrell. Finn the Dread Harrell, Wolf. the Dread Wolf. Yes. So he's big bad. And yes. then. He basically wants to rip the world asunder to bring back the ancient Elven Empire. Uh, continue. Morgan has. Somewhat the soul of Mithral. Mithal. Mithal. Um, yeah. And Plymouth was like, she had also yes. the soul. And also, you know when I said uh, years ago that the fucking elves started aging because they met humans? It was actually because Solus made the veil to separate the faith from the material plane. And he locked all the other elven gods in the veil. Uh, in the faith, yes. What was your favorite age? Um, I really like the black age, personally. <laughs> 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 I'm the angel.